here y'all so this is the i am not a gm match that i played today click where if you're trying to gift a sub bro um are you on your phone or your computer that's a great question actually bliss games have levy looking at looking at a stretcher but that boy is fast fast levy is a re there's a reason why he touched three thousand bullet i don't know y'all knew this it, today he was 28 something right that just wasn't his best he like 2800 that's not his best like that's another level of bullet to be honest but he was 3000 at one point you got you guys have to remember that you guys have to remember that so i knew i had i knew i had a great chance in blitz just because i know you know where i'm at and i like how i've been playing i've been prepping great you know stats against other ims and gms i'm doing good so i knew it was still gonna be hard but i knew bullet i was like man bullet might be tough and it was definitely tough can't see a harness the force and crush beth bot at 2700 today wow it's all thanks to your guidance i got a draw with the 2700 bot it was pretty nice i think or maybe it was a 2500 bot i just played it one time and i was like oh cool let's see what happens. let's see what's up uh one on my computer i was gifted a sub i want to make sure you can get a can't see. i already got it i already got it if you was gifted a sub it's already here and thank you he's totally new to twitch yes nothing wrong with that did you win no i lost in the bullet portion he's near ditsky good at bullet i know three thousand he need to be 3300 to be really strong <laughs> Look at this man yo he ain't strong <laughs> look at the 3300 it's like what are you talking about if you can't see it should be can't see that's right thanks thanks so guys this is the first game okay first game i was playing um we played levy today um i'm definitely happy with the results definitely happy with the result and in the blitz portion of course bullet is always another story it was definitely tough in bullet because you know just playing very fast chess there even with the one second increments very hard in those complex positions but i was playing uh, uh levy today in the blitz portion and it was great actually i was up i was up a few times i think maybe twice i was up actually almost closing out a two-point advantage and some of the games a lot of them i think i had winning chances so we're gonna actually check them out right now great games today homie big homie you went toe-to-toe -to -toe in the longer games that's huge super strong thanks bro appreciate it you had a lot of winning positions yeah i thought so but we're gonna analyze so i'm actually gonna pull up the big screen here so everybody can see this and then uh we're gonna put this on the tube on the youtube so you definitely did thanks appreciate it so here we go boom so i had black this first game so let's see it i actually didn't analyze any of these yet let me move this down a little bit I can see the text a little bit. Uh, yeah, I actually did not analyze any of these games yet. So this is my first time analyzing these games. So let's see it. D4, Knight of Six. Uh, I was black in this game. C4, G6. You know, he surprised me, actually. This is game one. He surprised me. Can you put this in focus mode? Oh, I can, actually. How does that look for y'all? Oh, that's fire. But I can't, I can't do anything else. I can't, like... Now I don't have the arrow thing. I have to use the arrows on the keyboard. Which is like, it's like awkward because I got to move my hand over here to the mouse. It's like awkward. It's awkward. Very awkward. Can I drag the board anymore? I think I've done that already. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep it like this. A little bit awkward. A little awkward without the uh, the arrows down here like this. So uh, I did not expect him though to play King's Indian at all. And I was like, King's Indian? This not him. Like, I was like, he don't play this. So I was already kind of hyped to see this. What's up, James? What's up, Jazzy? What's good? It looks fine. Thank you. Thank you. Need to see the lines? Yeah, they're right here. So, G6, right? Knight to C3. KID, that's right. King's Indian Defense, big fella. Hey, if y'all new to the stream, make sure y'all check out the YouTube channel. For reals, because we got a lot of content there. Thanks for the follow, Hologram. Your title Tuesday stream is dope, bro. Thanks. I'll be on Tuesday, too, as well, doing the next one. By the way, I got some money in 8 Ill. Be signed up for the next listen tonight. An eight eel. What is that? Is that a game or something? Bishop G seven, E four, D six. Oh, I will. Okay, I was like, I don't know what you're trying to say, Jazzy Blue. Bishop E two, castles. This is still theory, by the way. As you see, don't pay attention to it. You're actually gonna turn this off right now. This is not even a critical moment. This is still regular theory, right? If you go to my YouTube channel, I have a King's Indian defense, literally a playlist on it, a playlist where you guys can go learn how to play the King's Indian defense, which also, of course, Levy knows this as well, because he has a quick starter guy. He has something like similar. I think it was, what is it? Learn the King's Indian defense in uh, 10 minutes, 10 minute repertoire or something like that. So he has that. And I have a video of uh, videos. I have a lot of videos on the King's Indian defense. Sorry, streaming poker. Let me just up a little bit there. Sorry, streaming poker tonight. One, two turnies. Great job, bro. I feel like if white doesn't castle, black isn't getting what he wants. Well, the King's Indian defense. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Eigen, thanks for the follow. Extreme one. Um. Well, the thing is, castling 
Castling gets what we kind of want as black. It depends. I mean, it really does depend. But, uh, yeah, let's actually... Um, Castling kingside is not something that happens a lot. It does, but there's different lines. Like, you don't always attack this king. The king's in the defense. You, there's like a misconception where people think you always attack the king. You always attack his king. And that's actually wrong. That's actually wrong. You can attack their king, but you don't do it every single time. So there's certain lines that you do and there's certain lines that you don't. And the line that Levy played here was actually a build-up line. After bishop e3, they usually like to build up with f3 and g4 and play h4 and play in a Yugoslav fashion. Queen d2, queen d h5. If you're not familiar with the Yugoslav, you can Google it, look it up, Yugoslav variation of usually these dragon setups with a bishop on g7. Bobby Fischer in his uh, first game, my 60 memorable games, first game in the book, talks about having the dragon down to a science as I sack, sack mate after casting queen side in these type of setups. So it is very, very scary if you don't know what you're doing. But I do know this very well. Now, there are there are some nuances and like move orders that are kind of weird here. And I wanted to, you know, really play swashbuckling chess, you know. That's how I meant to swashbuckling chess, you know. I, for, I, I just like, I heard somebody say that word, which I knew I heard. I knew it in chess terms. I knew swashbuckling already, but... I so I heard somebody say it like recently and I was hyped and I was like, oh, that's the kind that's the chess I play. So I've been using it a lot. So I was trying to play swash back swash buckling chess here and like really turn up on that man. So um yeah, but I'm gonna show you what happened. Thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Your performance is really good. Levy is a beast, and you fought neck and neck today. Congrats. Thank you, Tanyan Chess. Yeah, Levy is a beast. Of course, he did what he had to do in the bullet there. That man is not that man is 3,000. He hit 3,000 for a reason. There's like only a whole there's a, a secret list, okay, on on um, chess.com or any site that reaches that level. So he was the very he I mean he was at 2,800. That's low, but he was hanging with big boys all day, you know, right? So I mean, he was playing very strong chess, of course, and uh, it feels good that we play great chess as well. So we play great chess. Now we got to learn. Got to have an iPad, bro. Yeah. Swash those buckles. Buckle those swashes. That is great. Thanks for the gifted sub from Jazzy Blue. Um, over to God Daves. Thank you so much, Jazzy Blue. Let's see this game. Here we go. Bishop e3, e5. This is the regular move. The regular move, all theory so far. D5 is always played. There's really no other move. You don't play bishop e3 and then take on e5. That's very weird. Very weird. Very, very weird. So, usually put the bishop on g5 if you're going to do the exchange variation. But after d5, the usual stuff is knight a6, knight c5. I'm just going to draw arrows here to actually show you. Knight a6, knight c5. You play a5 to stop the pawn from pushing b4 you're also going to play a4 in these lines playing c6 swinging the knight around to d7 and there's a lot of play f5 comes into play you know there's so much to do throw in the eval bar here you go throw that on so it's equal right now a5 knight a6 a5 first isn't the best right now because the idea here a5 is a move though it is a move that is correct don't cry hey what's up candy what's up Kong Garu. I actually saw you. Shout out to you, Kongaru. I saw you in the chat rooting for me. Uh, I think it was chess.com chat or Hikaru's chat. It might have been both, actually. But I saw you because I watched the replay. And I was like, yo, my guy, what's up? Hey, what's up? Computer has a tough time evaluating KID positions. Might be the most informative. Yes, that's right. That's right. Thanks, God, Daves, with the sub gifting over to Dr. Chess SRX. Appreciate you, man. Sup. What's up, Darren? What's good? Both. I saw you, Kongaru. Amazing job today, bro. Thanks, Merkin16. Feeling great. Now we analyzing the games because we're going to get better. And it's going to be for something for y'all to watch, too. So it's a double whammy, right? D5, Knight A6. So, you know, I'm going to learn from these mistakes and from both games. So let's see what happens. I'm looking for three openings as a beginner. 1,100 or so, up to 550. Ideally, one for white and two for black against E4. What would you recommend? E4 for life. So anything E4. Anything E4. Whatever. Don't care. Don't matter. E4, but make sure you know responses. And for black, uh, especially as a beginner, you need to choose a Sicilian. I recommend a Sicilian defense, but you need to choose one. Choose one. You got to choose one of them. And I mean, that's because I'm an aggressive player. I know my style now. So against D4, we're looking at it right now. King's Indian defense. Great score versus N versus I am. And uh, the fourth C, I know, man, I feel great about it. Thanks, bro. D4 is better, but I will let you live. <laughs> Somebody get that, man. Dope match today, can't you? Thanks, Eddie Bauer. Thank you. No problem, Tanya. KID against the London. Yeah, there's certain KID lines you can play. I have a video on YouTube about it, but I don't play that much. As you get stronger, certain stuff you can't play as much. 
So as I'm playing people 2,500 plus, you know, I can't be playing that line as much. If they're under 2,400, probably I could play it a lot, you know, but uh, the newer stuff should be like early C5s and stuff. Very early, like very early, especially if you're a King's Indian player. I have to look at that theory again. But after 96, G4, wild move here wild move it does happen g4 h4 h5 stuff and i go knight c5 immediately now the the difference here don't cry wolf said what about a5 if you do a5 and then g4 once i go here he already has g5 and i wish he had g5 anyway and i could still go knight h5 but there's some cases which i need to go through this theory again the thing about not all chess but definitely the king's indian defense the king hold on real quick let me make sure that ain't that important Goodbye. what do you know <laughs> it's funny uh thanks for the follow vegan garden yo that's what's up i'm a vegetarian myself so shout out to you what is white thinking his king safety looks blown apart uh no actually no his king safety is great right now it's great i mean there's nothing wrong with it. and in fact the king actually sits here it actually sits sits here in the center for a while sometimes you know <laughs> just a minute but it's kid yeah well yo big respect today thank you champion jam welcome welcome to the stream appreciate that I thought he played g4 no he did he played g4 you talking about that but that his king's still safe around it we'll look at that you want so many games with black big respect well i did actually i did win the games with black but they appreciate that and black's tough to win with especially against strong players like that but knight a6 so um the, sometimes i really got to go through the theory again there's so much theory in king's indian defense it don't even make sense but if you really like it i mean anything that you like you're just going to study it so for me i've been playing the kid faithfully for like the last three years two and a half three years something like that but after knight a6, knight c5, and we live, right? So after g4, which is what he played, I played knight c5. And on g5, oh, I just take this. But on bishop f3, I can't remember if it was c6 or not. I think it was. My son in there turned up. He and his room turned up right now. You know, my, my young dog. So c6, a5. I got to go through this again. And now that I'm not prepping for a match, I'm just going to, usually when I'm prepping for a match, I go through certain amounts of theory in big chunks, big chunks. A lot of my students have seen me been working. So I go through a lot of stuff in chunks and chunks, like really big, massive amounts of information. So when I'm not, when I'm not prepping for something like a match, then I'm going to get, go a little bit slower, especially on understanding wise and trying to figure out this again because there's a newer way i used to play the a5 way but this knight c5 like i forgot sometimes you even sack right here sometimes you even sack and i play c6 but i wonder i was thinking after and actually what happened was right after i made the move i went back you know how you can go back in the live game in thanks for the follow in the live game right in the live game i went back while my timer's running, because I was like, I think I was supposed to sack on E4, but I don't remember. I think it is, bro. I think, now that I'm looking at this, but it's very hard to, like, you know, you, you want you don't want to be wrong. <laughs> You're like, oh, let's try to do it. And this is the first game, so I probably should have went for it. Um, but I saw it afterwards, and because now G5 is a little bit weird, and I had to play this weird Knight H5 move, which I'll show you guys in a minute. But, yeah, nice stream. Well done. To see you next stream. Thanks, Bowden's Bishop. Thanks for the subs, man. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, bro. I'll see you on the next one. You can, watch, you can cast the rest of this on YouTube. Why knight a6? Knight c5 is move order rather than a5 first. Uh, there, is there no fear of b4? Um, no. Well, there is fear of b4, but he doesn't have time to play it right now. He doesn't have time to play it right now because of this. Now, after bishop f4, bishop f3, c6, b4 is a possibility. But I think I was going to sack at that point. I think I literally was about to sack it here. But he played g5, which let me know, oh, snap. I was probably supposed to sack it now instead of playing c6. We'll look at that right now. I think Levy likes to change his pawns, charge his pawns. Yeah, lots, a lot of people go for this line. Thanks for the follow Solo Destiny. You did good. I was rooting for you all the way. Thanks, old boar. 37. Appreciate you. Does engine say sack is a move? We're about to check it right now. So how about my KIA video? Yo, I actually have to study the theory on that. I was like, wait a second. I need to, I need to give you a, a quality one. Crap stain because I can give you a good one, but I want to give you a real quality one because there's a lot in there. King's Indian attack. I have a book on it, and I was like, oh, I want to, I want to be, you know, ready, ready. So let's see, right? Is this sacking? No, but let's see what happens if I did. Am I just crushed? Now here, here's the thing about the engine. Here's the thing about the engine. My my students notice anything up to plus two or minus two when you're analyzing is usually equal. A lot of my students know this. Why? 
Because as a human, what's a human going to do? A human is not going to play the most accurate moves. We know this. So 1.92 is going to change very quickly. Let's actually see what happens. Knight takes c4 probably. Knight takes c4. Bishop takes. F5 is the idea, correct? That was the idea here. So I just don't remember if this theory was right, though. It doesn't seem like it right now. And sometimes I'm supposed to play F4 and E4. So there's some move order I'm missing. Some move order I'm definitely missing from here. Definitely missing something. But that was the idea. I was thinking that. That's so why I have to go back and check this again. You got to go back and check this one if you want to be great. You got to check your lines and you have to make sure they're accurate and you have to repeat that over and over and over. So here, G4, Knight, C5, Bishop, F3, I played C6. He went G5. And immediately, guys, if you've seen the Bobby Fischer Boris Basket game, right? I can't remember what game it was, but immediately, I mean, this is always an idea because, you know, Bobby did it first. Uh, a human is not going to play the most accurate. Magnus confirms that work, yeah. That's right. Q on the seventh rank. Queen on seventh rank. I mean, you could. You could. It is a move. But you can't play passive yet. Like, that's more passive. King's Indian is all about swashbuckling, dynamicism, sacrificing exchanges, sacrificing pieces in the center of the board. All kind of stuff. You know, that's my kind of game. Do you notice the difference in points if you change engines? Is that the event something to do? Not difference in points, but difference in ideas, though. Difference like some some like some engines may want to do something tactical or set up for something tactical. Some want to do it more solid and positional and win it in a longer end game. But here's the, here's the move, guys. I went knight h5 here. Knight h5. Mickey dead, guys. I know. He says freaking Trumpowski, bro. I am so Trumpowski'd out. I don't even know what to do. Like that's why I played that knight g8 because I've played it before. Because I remember I've studied a lot of Trumpowski theory now, and I still haven't found one that I actually like to play. So I'm like, but I always want to play Knight of Six. So I'm like bittersweet there. Because like if I don't play Knight of Six, then I got to play something else. I don't want to play nothing else. So if I play Knight of Six, then I'm going to have to face the Trumpowski, but I haven't found a line yet that I actually like that much. The lines I played today against Levy, I did like. I did like, right? That's past tense. Now I don't like them no more. Because even though I got the positions I studied and learned, it wasn't... Like I was defending on the tactics end. I still had tactics, but I was on the defending end and not the attacking end. You always rather be on the attacking end of tactics, not the defending end. So I was on defend. I was on the. I was on the defending end of the tactics the whole time, all the time when I took that extra pawn, and I got tired of doing that. And that's so stressful. That's a lot of brain power. So. Man, it's now we're on a new hunt for what do we do against certain Trumpowskis, right? Like, oh my goodness. Sacrifice gives life. Shout out to fellow walk. We got another purple here verified in the chat. Welcome. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We in here. Let's go. Let's go. Engine really doesn't like knight h5. Now, let me tell you one thing about the engine. This is a Hikaru statement. Hikaru says about the engine, King's Indian defense, engine always says white is better. But in reality, white is much worse. I don't remember where that came from. But it was Hikaru Nakamura, and it is good to know that. So, I, honestly, I don't even turn on the evaluation bar or this sometimes when you're looking at certain openings because they're always going to say white is better. Always. Always. When it's going to say white's better. Even when it seems like it's not. Like, I remember I watched the replay, um, too, of this whole match. And, uh, you know, it was it was this one was a very like back and forth game because of at one point, Robert Hess was like, I don't know what I don't know. White's going to win. Black's going to win. Right. Because it was it's was all about who's getting that attack off first. And I want to see honestly where I went wrong here, because I did actually have some very good moves in here. Right. He took on C5 first. And the idea here of knight h5, if he takes here, this is a usual thing that can happen. If queen h5, immediately see the engine go up, but I think it's knight d3. That probably is the move. Yep, knight to d3, and I was thinking if king up somewhere, I have knight f4, but let's see what happens. What if, like, king d2? That seems reasonable. Oh, knight takes b2 coming around, c4. Back door open, big fella. Okay, how about king e2? Same thing? Knight takes b2, but there's no check, though. Thanks for the sub, the Twitch Prime, and we live. That, ain't, that didn't rhyme like that. Thanks for the prime. Thanks for the prime. Great games. Very close match. GG's. M dot. Thank you so much, M dot. Appreciate you. Tier one. Ten months in a row. Great games today against Levy. I played chess as. I played chess as a kid. Okay, there it is. I played chess as a kid. All right. Great games today against Levy. Thanks, fellow walk. Hey, you need some? Let me know. I got you. Prime and we lime, but that like lime. Like, what are we? What we lime? What do they even mean? I mean D5. What you talking about, Mickey? Instead of knight f6, D5. 
No, I'm not playing OD5. What is that? That's symmetrical. I ain't doing that. Oh, uh, man, uh, that look angry. Yeah, very angry. Very angry uh, notation back here. You know, so this this could have worked, though. This is actually what I wanted. D45, Prime, and we sublime. Oh, that's nice. Man from Florida. Okay, coming in here with the bars. For effort today. Thank you, JJ, the ultra bullet player. Oh, lover, actually. A bullet lover. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yeah, it felt great, man. It felt great playing Levy, going back and forth. So now, you know, I'm about to really kick it into high gear with studies and just really going for it now because today was a great match, man. It was uh, it was awesome to be able to do that. Voice the Trump. Yeah, I know, Mickey. I know. I really have to find something against that, Mickey, because I, the, that game, right, when I played Night G8, I have done that before. And every single time I do it, people think. Every single time I do it, they like, I have never seen that before. Or sometimes they'll troll you right back and they'll play bishop c1. <laughs> Imagine that. d4, knight f6, bishop g5, knight g8, bishop c1. And then you can repeat moves as a draw. Pretty stupid. Pretty stupid. <laughs> but there you go there, right? You know, that's pretty. <laughs> you were toe to toe. Let's go, Philoise. Right. Trump c5, queen b6. Feels like the most thematic. Yeah, but you really need some work here. You really need some homework there. And I did homework there. And I still didn't get the positions. Like, I want to be on the attacking end of a tactical position. Not on the defending end. Because on the defending end, you have more more chances to make a mistake. And I ain't trying to make, you know, a mistake there. Especially when you get lower time. It's tough. The reason I love your stream is because your play style is similar to mine. I just watched your video on attacking the Carol and it was awesome. Yes, sir, man. I love attacking the Carol Khan. I am. I like the fantasy variation. Levy just dropped a video too, actually, on the fantasy variation. Y'all should check that out. And uh, I have a video on the fantasy variation. Now I play the pen off Botvinnik. I love the pen off Botvinnik. Having great results with it, actually. Uh, do you have a video on how to analyze your own games? I do, Kone Garu. I do. Actually, send me a message on Discord. Send me a message on Discord, and I'll send you that video. I know you're a student, so uh, you're one of my students. So send me a video. I mean, send me a Discord thing. I'm going to send you. I have a video for, like, members and, and students. Like It's like a secret thing. What about the lines where you leave the knight on F6? Yeah, you know what, Mickey? I think I'm going to have to go back to that. Like, there's no other choice, really. I, I don't have another choice. Um, either leaving the knight on F6 or playing that 94 line, but... The way Levy was playing it, and that bishop f4, and sacking the pawn, even uh, uh, Hambo, Aman, Aman uh, he said, uh, what did he say today? He said, um, it's always fun for white to play, and he's right. It's every time I was defending in those positions. I wasn't, I was attacking, but I was like counter-attacking. I was never like aggressive, and that's my style. I'm aggressive. So if I'm not aggressive, I have to like, you know, Muhammad Ali on the ropes, let you swing at me, and then catch you, and then catch you, you know, when you're slipping, right? But you're not going to hit me, though. You're trying to hit me, and you're missing. You may think it's good, you know, Muhammad Ali style there, but it's, man, bro, I need something for that drop, bro. That's wrong, bro. It's so annoying. Like, Pan of Bobbin is great. Super GMs, it's a drop, but we're not so all Super GMs. That's right. My phone is jacking up. So is bullet skill essential in being the best? Is being more like a style instead of testing chess skill? I really, yeah, bullet is a uh, bullet. I mean, it is chess. And high level bullet is chess. It's just very hard chess. Because you have a minute and, like, it's harder. It's just much harder to do. One minute, one second increment. It can be real chess. It can be, right? It can be real chess. You know, that's why most people just play Blitz and stuff like that. But it doesn't like that. Uh, um, AK ak, ak, Rotic or AK Rotic says Bullet doesn't improve your chess. Get better at chess and play Bullet Fun. Yeah, it doesn't really improve your chess, guys. It doesn't really improve your chess. You do want to know that. But it is fun. It is very fun. Okay. Um, is the Stafford Gambit good? Yes. I'm just going to leave that at that. Yes, that's a scary one. That's a scary one. I'll tell you another one. Here's a secret. Nachmanson Gambit. Nachmanson. I'm not doing any videos on that right now because I don't want nobody to know the prep I didn't put in on that. I've been hitting people with that. I was trying to hit Levy with it, but he plays something weird. Levy say he tried to play the Stafford and Gambit on you. Because <laughs> I don't play the lines anymore that I avoid the Petrov. And I avoid weird stuff like that. Stafford Gambit. I don't get that no more. Nope. Because I play a system that can either go into Knoxman, Knockmanson. It can go into a Joko Piano, Wesley So style. Or it can go into um, 
Scotch Gambino land where like, you know, we from the Scotch Gambino, right? We know about the Scotch Gambit around here. So it's a, it's very nice. It's a move order that lets you get, you know, three different ways depending on what black does. You should play your cancer variation against the Trump. I wish. D4, Knight of Six. I mean, uh, it's nothing I can do there. Nothing I can do. Bishop's opening. It starts as a Bishop's opening, but then it could be a Scotch Gambit. It could be a Philidor. It could be it could be like four different openings. Like it's so nice, bro. It's like crazy. All right, so back to this game, y'all. So after G5, I played Knight H5, Bobby Fischer style. Bobby Fischer style. Now after snapping on C5 because he wanted to get rid of the D3 knight, so there's no problems. Now after Bishop takes C5, I hit him with D takes because you know you just got to keep material even. Pretty easy. And then he snaps, and now you see the evaluation is equal here, guys. But I mean, it says white slightly better, but they always say that for no matter what. I mean, even in the beginning of the game, they're like, "Oh, it's a uh, 0.3 because uh, white has a uh, you know." I'm like, no, I don't know. <laughs> no. What are you talking about? F5. F5 here. Yeah, but I played F5 because I wanted to open a file. I just want to open a file. And you always have to notice here that the queen is not doing a lot right now. It does. It is going to take some moves. I mean, like at least, you know, three three or four moves or so to get something here. I do have H6 as an option. That's actually what Robert Hess pointed out in the replay when I watched uh, later earlier. But um, I would have had H6, but I just I just didn't like it for some reason. But it's all good. Seriously, though, I was watching a video of Jim GM on Trump. He was talking about throwing them off tempo with non-standard moves. That's why I played Knight G8, Jazzy Blue. That's exactly why I played Knight G8 against the Trumpowski. You know, I'm going to have to make that work. I'm going to have to, like, probably do an engine analysis only. Maybe find some chess-based games. I wonder if I could do that. Like, find some chess-based games and just and just see if anybody has that Knight G8 in there. Hey, Will fought James. Thanks. Chess Weave in the building. Yo, shout out to Chess Weave. That guy is a monster in the chat. What was the score? It was 13-8. I lost in the bullet portion. I have no uh, no shame in, in saying it. I lost in the bullet portion, bro. I don't play as much bullet anymore because I am really actively working on my norms and just trying to like really you know get to that big boy level. This year, I'm, I'm shooting for 2,800 blitz. So I'm doing some good prep, man. And it showed today. I did great. It was great. Is it a move, though? Uh, Knight G8, you know, I've had good success and I've had bad success. So it is a move, but is it a good one is the question. And I just got to find some real good solid foundation if I'm going to play that Knight G8 line, Mickey. If not, I'm just going to have to, you know, you got to bite the bullets. You suck it up. Hey, it is what it is. You got to play something different, you know, or play the lines where I keep the Knight on G6 or F6. And I might have to do G takes F6 and play that way because that's more combative. That's more tactical. I'm playing F5, Bishop G7, E6, or G8 stuff. Maybe cast in queen side, you know, so it depends. Maybe I'll go for that, but. Thanks for the follow, Zan Damon ten ten. Appreciate you. Thanks for the follow. So here back to act actually after Queen takes H five, I hit him with F five, and then Levy hit me with F three here. Very nice move. Of course, if pawn takes, pawn takes. So it was pretty simple here. I can't really attack this. I needed a move, and I was thinking Queen B six and Queen B four. I immediately spotted this weak pawn. So if I play Queen B six and he castles, which he did, I can go hit this weak pawn. Because he's still slightly underdeveloped, slightly though, and I don't see a clear plan right now for him getting to my king. I wasn't afraid of d6 because I had bishop d6, or uh, I played queen b4 and I wasn't afraid of d6 because bishop e6 at any moment. Uh, many of your shortcomings is a mark of champion. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks for the follow, Ethan Klein. Dana's my guy. Oh, Quinn, Quinn gifted that. Quinn gifted that over to my man's chest weed. We are expecting a full anti-Trump repertoire in a month. Man, you know what, Mickey? I almost jumped out of my seat right now. I'm so hyped. You right, bro. You right. I don't have to stand for this. I don't have to deal with this. You right, Mickey. Come on now. Come on now. Hey, Quinn, send me a um, send me a message on Discord, Quinn, right now. And just say, Trumpowski, in all caps. In all caps. I'm about to go to work on that opening. But I really need to anyway. Because it's a, you know it was nice to play Levy in something that I actually prepped. I actually prepped for the Trump house because I knew he, it was an active opening he played. He actually has a course on iChess.net, if you guys don't know, on the Trump house You know, I do very extensive research when I'm prepping for matches and stuff. But I found, I'm like, oh, he got a Trump house course. Like, oh, okay, he really played this. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm going to try to switch it up and play some stuff that maybe he don't know as much. And then I was looking, 
you know, when you're prepping, you know, you have this, what's the most aggressive? What's the most to your style? And for me, I'm tactical. 94 with the H6, Queen B6, and all the tactics there. Yeah, it's tactics, but it's still very fun for White. And I'm just tired of that. I think Levy said the Trumpowski single handedly took him from 2000 to 2200. Worth considering? Yeah, I, look, I believe it. That thing was good, man. That was a, he was playing really good with that opening. And I was like, yo, I'm not getting the positions I want. So I need to do something else. Will you try for GM future in the future? Oh, I'm already working on it, man. I'm already, I mean, COVID, you know, messed up a lot of things for people, but definitely. That's right. Uh, man. Um, but yeah, so let's get through this game. Queen B4. Knight G D E2. Queen takes C4. Yeah, that's good. I play Queen takes C4. Because, I mean, why not, right? It's a free pawn. It's a free pawn. Then I have to ask White, what is he going to do? And if I see B3, I was going to go Queen B4, I think. I think I was going to go queen b4. I don't remember. I don't remember. But let's see. Queen takes c4. He played queen h4 first, which I think this was a weird move. I actually didn't know what he was trying to do with this move. Actually, I thought he was trying to go back. But then I was like, why is he trying to go back? Maybe he's trying to defend. And then if that's the case, well, now I got to be winning if he's trying to come back and defend. Because his queen is like, you know, that's that's too tempy right there. That's one move. And then the second move with the queen, you know, didn't make any threats. Just defending. I should be better. Especially with the queen here placed nicely. B5, B4 is a possibility. I'm almost trying to open his diagonal here. I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen. I can also still try to open a file. I, I'm pressuring the position. I also have bishops. So as soon as the, the position opens up, it's game time. C takes D5. So I took on D5. Because the fact that he can't take here, he put himself in a voluntary pin. That's number one. If knight takes immediately, I actually have queen takes E2. Oh, he can't take it. <laughs> That's pin. <laughs> Don't make the illegal move. <laughs> yeah, Queen H4 fell off, says Chess Weave. For real, bro. I really didn't understand this move. I mean, of course, I'm sure. Like, Levy had a reason for this. Like, it's Levy. Like, he had a reason. We just don't know what it was. He he was definitely calculating something. But he played Queen H4. Yeah, don't hang your king, big fella. Hey, nice try today. You played well. Thanks for 20 BCE. So, yeah. So, of course, after Queen H4, I captured. And then after capturing, uh, maybe he was trying to make room for the knight. That's probably what that was. Because I'm still trying to figure out, like, what was that move about? Maybe he was in time trouble, too. I mean, it could be a lot of maybes, a lot of factors. Pawn takes, you only have two options. Really, one, because if pawn takes, queen hangs, and you can't take with the knight. So rook takes is the only option. And if that does happen, I have bishop b6 planned here. So now I'm, I'm basically fully developed. Rook to the file with a smile. b5, b4, and it's a good day. So, you know, I'm feeling great there. But after X, after uh, c takes d5, he hit me with this nice move. I knew this in-between move, just and jug whatever you want to call it. I knew this was going to be a good one. And he played b3 here. And after b3, I kind of forced to play queen a, queen a6. Because a queen b4, I think he's hitting me with tempo. Knight takes d5. And look at that. Engine go crazy. So I went queen a6. And that's equal now. And that was correct. All right, then I got to be back in a few. But make a final table on third and fourth tonight. So I need to focus. All right, bro. Focus, Jazzy. See you on the next one, man. Queen a6 apparently was okay here. And after g6... I really want to see what was I supposed to do. Yeah, it was h6. Just lock it up. Like, how is he getting in there? And at the time, at the time, this is very tough. At the time, I didn't play h6 because I was like, this bishop's already bad. And I don't want to make it even worse. And, like, I might have potential here. So I tried to keep it. And that was my my down, my downfall there. And that goes, you know, I tell my students this, too. It's not about what you want to play. It's what you kind of have to play. h6 was a have-to-play move. G6 is what I wanted to play. I mean, uh, taking on G6 is what I wanted to play. So, and I did, I did do that as well. But that came with a lot of problems. It came with a lot of problems. I mean, I knew as soon as I took this, he played Rook G1. I was in, I was in trouble. Thanks for the follow, El Chato. Welcome to the stream. We in here. So, Rook to G1, D4, and then Knight D5. And I was supposed to play Rook F7, but it's so hard. It's so hard not to take material, right? I'm like, bro, this knight is hanging. And if you're not mating me, I'm up a piece. But here, it was just not a good move, right? It was, it was just not a good move. Rook f7 was better, but I didn't like this check anyway. Like, rook f7. Oh, man. Oh, no. Yeah, I wasn't allowing this. What? Look at the line they given here. You see this? Like, I, But this is King's Indian. You have to expect this kind of thing. If I want to learn how to play, what do I suggest I do? Get you a chess.com account, first off. You can do that. You can actually just look right under the video. You can get you, or, you know, under the About tab in my section here on the stream, get you a chess.com account if you don't already. If you got one, cool, bro. Hang out with us. Come to a lot of the streams. 
YouTube channels, and uh, use the learn tab on chess.com. This is the club on chess.com right here. So after knight d5, uh, knight d5, uh, I took on, yeah, and it was a wrap. I mean, I I felt that it was wrong. I felt that it was wrong, but I, I think I don't, it doesn't show our time right here, but we, we was definitely low on time, and I almost flagged. I almost flagged here. I flagged a few times. I think Levy did too. Levy flagged like once or twice, but still, no, he flagged a few times, but it was still, um, I was like, man, I just wanted to take that. So I was supposed to play rook f7, and the line they give here is knight e7, king f8, and I'm supposed to let him take this? Are you serious? Like, what is this? King e2, and now I'm supposed to be okay here as black. Now this is, I mean, this is defended. This is defended. Bishop e6 looks great. The check is defended back here. The knight's blocking the file. c4 is a thing, and I do have rook c8, and in worst case scenario, I can run to this cubby hole. Over here on the other side of the board. I mean, the super king walk here. Super king walk. But that's after developing these last two. And putting some counter pressure on black at the same time. That was hard to see. So now I know. Now I know. This is why you analyze your games. So now I know, for future reference, not only not playing pawn takes g6, but also h6 as well. And and I do need to do my theory study too. Because out of the opening, I think I played that wrong. Unless that sacrifice was a thing. I don't really remember. You did great in the match. Thanks. Joey Grips, we in here. 95 is a neat move. I knew it was going to be strong. I just didn't know. I was like, well, I, <laughs> I remember taking it, and I was like, well, I don't. <laughs> I remember the capture in that night, and I was like, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> I hope I survive. And that's how I went into it when I took that night. I was like, this is the first game, so you know what? Hopefully, I survive. All right, let's see what happens. got to say I was losing focus with studying last week, but I'm motivated again after today. Gizmeister Flex, I'm super motivated too as well. I played some great chess today. Against such a strong player like Levy, and uh, now I just got to get better, man. Just all about getting better. Pineapple738, thanks for the follow. Queen takes e2. He hit me with a move, rook d2. But actually, the best move here was already winning after rook takes g6, as uh, Robert pointed this out too. Robert Hess did on the... Um, on uh, the chess.com stream, you had you had him worried in the first two segments. I know, I know, I did, I know, but I mean, I was already worried before we got to the bullet section. I was already worried for the bullet. That's a good and a bad thing because I mean, well, number one is the respect of just him being twenty eight hundred bullet player and actually had a three thousand rating at one point. So you know, absolutely, just you always fear that always fear that you know unless you 3000 too but if you're not you do fear that so you know i knew i was i was like man i need to turn up i need to turn up now through all these blitz games because the bullet i don't know what's gonna happen mind me asking uh what got you in the chest interested in the story it's actually my story is right under the about actually here too but my dad taught me how to play dad got me in his, in the chest and honestly the rest is history dad get lessons too and he he paid for him but he get a he get a discount but he told me how to play yeah I've lost more games than you can imagine. So little time, yeah. I know, bro. Queen takes e2. Yeah, yeah. Queen takes e2. I knew this was over, though. Awesome. Thanks. Fellow walk in the building here. So, Queen takes e2. I just jumped off the deep end here. That was not a move, but I didn't have time. So, you know, you don't have time. It's just, anything's a move, and you don't have time. Rook to d2. It's actually, oh, it's just under course, Darren. Only course, no s. Queen d2. And as, apparently, I'm okay after Queen takes f3. I want to see, though. I want to see. He took here and it was a draw. So what was I supposed to do? Because I blundered. Queen F1 was game over. And then I flagged right here. I flagged because I didn't know where to go. And I was like, he got so many moves. Like 97 still there. Doubling after moving to queen. I don't have a check. And then I didn't have enough time to think here. I didn't have enough time to think. And I definitely flagged right here. So this was game one. My mistakes, a few of them. First, first, actually, and this is why you go through your games so you can analyze to see what mistakes were. My mistake was not knowing or not remembering what I was accurately supposed to do right here. I do know knight c5 is correct. I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure this is correct because bishop f3 is a move. But from my studies and my theory that I do have, I think I was supposed to take this. I just don't remember, to be honest. So I have to go back and study that. So that's rule number one. I got to go back and know my stuff. Um, rule number two here. Is after we got this in, we got f5 to work, f3, queen b6, castle, queen side, queen b4. These were all good. These were all good. Pawn takes uh, here. And then I'm sub this is number point number two. Like just lock it up. Why give him more? If I play h6 here, he's never getting in here. He's going to have, not that he's never, he has to get the knight aware. Like you have to get it here, but that's, that's not realistic. Yeah, that's not realistic. And I can always take that. 
And if, and if knight takes d5, takes, check, I'm out the way and have a nice day, right? You know, there's nothing going on anymore. Like, I was good, man. I was good. So I know what to do for next time. So the main mistake was the h6 take. Yeah, that was a huge mistake. That was huge. So this would, this would, have, this would be a nice win here if I was able to do that. Thanks for the follow, Zen Store and Pen Manson. Thanks for the follows. Appreciate that. You had the two pieces inactive. Queenside, Bishop, and Rick. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, it was tough, right? Very, very tough. But this was game one. So I dropped the game one there. Cool. We had to bounce back. Now, let's go to game two. Game two. Okay. Oh, here they go. Okay, so this is game one. I'm just checking them off, so... We can we don't lose the place. So it's game this is game two. I'll grab this PGM real quick. Okay, so that's game one. Here's game two. This one was a pan off Botvinik, so that was definitely he was definitely playing black, Carol Khan. Bro, the new merch is amazing. Yo, I got my fire that's not a move hat on. I'm telling you, like these things are so comfy. Snap back. It's fresh, you know. I love wearing it. You in night mode, big fella? You in night mode? What you mean, bro? What's about G5? What about G5 98 instead of night H5? Yeah, 98 is a move, but I like that Bobby Fisher move because it, it, it really baits people into taking that bishop that night. Did you have any other KID games? That was the only one we had, Kings Indian Defense. Only one we had. Are you using chess.com? Yes, I am. For the analysis, I am. You left the front door open and he came in. I did. He did, bro. He did. Thanks, Razor Brand. Appreciate you. So here we go. Here we go. This is game two, right? So I'm, I need to win here. You know, I'm bouncing back. So we play a pan off Botvinik. Now, I used to play, I used to play uh, Caracon Exchange, which is actually on um, B4. looks really strong. Bishop takes B4. That actually does kind of look strong, but maybe. But actually, in those lines, you have knight a6. And then after a3, you play c5. But then b5, knight c7. You still kind of cramped. I wonder if we can get f5 in anyway. Which is kind of weird. That's how King's Indians go. It's very, very difficult stuff. Cracker Man, thanks for the follow. Do you play the French? Not at all. Used to. Back in the day, I used to. Got me up to like 1800. So d5 takes takes. I used to play the Carol Khan Exchange. You can check that on my YouTube channel if y'all want to, you know, see my old stuff. My new stuff now is the Penoff Botvinik. And also, I like to dabble. And I say dabble. I really like to play it sometimes. The fantasy variation, of course, like I said before, Levy has a video out on this variation here. Uh, the video was like, this one pawn is the end of the Carol Khan. But yeah, he played the Carol Khan. Like, I found that so funny that he made a video on, like, this is how you, this one pawn crushes the Carol Khan. And then he plays it, right? But I'm not about to play this because I'm sure. I'm sure he prepped for this. I know. And I'm not. I don't know this that much. I know a little bit. I know enough to get by. And also the games that I have played, I look at my record here. I'm like, you know, it's pretty good. But black gets positions where I don't think. I think I'm pretty sure black is equalized. They're doing well. So I'm like, uh, I'd rather go in stuff that, you know, if it's going to be equal, it's going to be on my terms, like tactics wise. So or, you know, I have things to do. He plays Carol and he just chucks that away. Yeah, he really did. I've been playing fantasy, but I have been in trouble holding the center well you got to make sure you defend everything ever mess with the bayonet or the shear off the bayonet that would be uh the bayonet is uh white doing b4 i think i think uh, quote me on that shear off that's the g4 stuff yeah that's usually g4 stuff i'm always a fan of g4 stuff have you ever played a gm otb yes i have never beaten one over the board yet but i have drawn two of them i might have played four Maybe five, something like that. I don't remember, but I know I have two draws. I haven't like got crushed by every GM, you know, going up through the ranks. <laughs> going up through the ranks. Now, now I'm winning, man. I'm doing great, though. Over the board chest, not any, not lately, you know. COVID messed a lot of stuff up, but it's all good, man. The games were exciting today. Great job. Thank you, Amiriel. Am Amaru. Amariless. Amariless. There we go. Amariless. All right. All right. There's a bayonet versus K KID. Yes, there is a bayonet versus KID. So here we go. Pan up Bobinick. Just be the F and bullet. Okay, great job. This is the G6 line, and I'm very prepped. Honestly, man, whew, I know all, I know 90, I would say 95%. Let's say that. I know about 95% of the theory on the pan up Bobinick. So anything that you respond to here, there's even a line here where I can go into the C3 Cecil for the kill, where people play knight C6, 
first instead of knight c3, which is the book's recommendation and most modern theory. I actually take here, and now we have entered a c3 Cecile for the kill. We have now entered a c3 Sicilian from a a Carol Con. So it's very good to understand this, and this is a very good c3 Sicilian. I mean, I'm doing excellent right now. Uh, okay, so let's go back. But he played this. I think this is the only one we played. Like, this is the only one we played. And I saw, I was ready for this one too. There's another line like this that he plays. Levy actually played this line. I mean, literally, you know, when I was checking the stats, like he played this two days ago. So I was expecting to see this, which this is one of my favorite ones to play against. And he didn't play it. And I was like, dang, man, like, what do you, he must have read my mind. Like, how did you do that? You know, because like, oh man, Bishop E6 is a weird line. It's a weird line, but I've seen it multiple times. And I mean, let me just actually just show you all this cool, this cool little trap, right? It's actually Queen B3 here, believe it or not. Knight A5, hit that man with a check, flex real hard. Bishop d7, hit him, oh my goodness, did he just sack his queen, yes he did, hit that man, oh man, he just took it, that's a check, flex real hard, you can block with your queen if you want to, knight d7, knight e5, and we live, we gonna get those right back with interest, big fella, and then if a6, actually queen c7 is the best, bishop takes, and go here, bishop f4 first, and then it's, um, what is it after bishop f4, is it bishop f4, or is it bishop b5, it's one or the other as bishop f4 and then queen b6 then bishop b5 yeah there it is bishop b5 queen takes d4 takes king c8 and then bishop e3 queen b4 rook c1 this is the line i remember and uh this line's nasty like i've sacked the queen here the rook's hanging there's mate threats it's ridiculous right i was ready for levy right here i was hoping he went for this bishop e6 i was gonna sack the queen everybody was gonna go, go crazy on stream i was about to be turned up and back flipping and i don't even do those so you know it's uh he didn't play it so he played this which is more positional so i was like man come on levy come on bro i wouldn't went crazy too i would have knocked everything off the table like knock it all off you know get all hype queen b3 bishop g7 snap castles Bishop e2. So this is still um this is still theory, by the way. This is theory too. <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh dude, great game. Impressed a lot of people. Thanks, man. Hey man, feels great. Now I have to put the foot on the gas. Put the foot on the gas. Let me get close to the camera. Put the foot on the gas. Alright. We're gonna sit back. But no, for real. We gotta really do that now, man. Cause that just helped a lot. It really helped a lot. It showed me where um Show me where I am. He didn't crush me in the blitz like he was supposed to, quotation marks. Oh, he's an NM, right? I mean, I've been an NM for 10 years, guys. So it's, uh, it's time to upgrade, man. Time to upgrade. But but you need to work. That's the thing that people miss. They never see the work that you do to get to the level you become. It just happens. And I tell my students this all the time. You become that person before you actually are it, right? You know, like if you want to be GM, you have to play like a gm you have to beat gms you have to do this before you actually do it and same thing for im fm master expert 1500 it, it's the same thing let me my must drive previous not muscle car yeah time to become im you already know bro my username is astribius i went 80 percent of my games with whites when opening with b4 oh my goodness big vega yo hey look i don't recommend that don't try that at home this is a family channel but secondly you should keep playing that and I don't say that a lot about no 1B4 at all. But if it's working, you got an 80% win rate, why would you stop playing it? Now, when you start getting crushed, because it's, it's eventually going to happen. You know, you're gonna then it's going to be like, man, I got a 30% average. <laughs> then, okay, it's time to stop. It's time to stop then, all right? Bishop B2, A5, that's when you get stronger. You have to stop playing certain stuff, you know? So that sounds like some Jedi talk. That's right, Kongaro, come on now. That is the Polish Quinn. That is the Polish A5. This A5 move, um, it threw me off because this is not from the book. The book moves, right? And I think there's usually honestly one. There's E6, which is weird. Queen B6. Knight A6, I think. And Knight D7, which is the most common. I was expecting Knight D7. 
So is it possible for a person to become GM in their year? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You have to like, but you got to play real strong chess. Like you got to go to a tournament and blank the tournament. Like, you know, nine round tournament, get eight out of nine, knocked out everybody. Like they might give you the GM title, but it has to be at a big event, right? Usually uh, that that's harder to do. I mean, that's extremely hard to do, but it, it is very possible. Some people do get norms, all three of them in the same year. Like it's crazy. Like, you know, they play a real good chess there. But it happens. Bishop e2, a5 is on the board. Knight f3. This was game two. Yeah, I just played knight f3. I don't remember why I played knight f3 instead of bishop f3. I think I remember. Maybe I went knight f3. I think I remember now. I went knight f3 because I was trying to figure out, like, you know, I just, I'm about to castle because this is unusual. a5 isn't really played like that. And usually, theory is bishop f3 anyway. Or when the knight goes to d7, we go knight h3 blocking because the bishop's blocked and then i'll play knight f4 for extra protection on this pawn that we stole here so knight f3 knight a6 i play a3 because this knight's gonna be extremely annoying coming in here if i would have castle i didn't like this happening um or like bishop f5 first and then playing knight before my queen's almost trapped i didn't like that kind of stuff so i just play a3 to prevent it once and for all once and for all. So after a3, he played knight c7. Hans, he had to get six and a half out of nine. That's right. Yeah, thanks. Crazy. No problem. Bishop c4, and then he plays a4. So here, this was a pretty cool move. Some people were just saying take it, but you know, you have to be careful. Like, yeah, engine doesn't like that. You know, taking stuff sometimes. Also, I think that ran into b5. Wait, I looked at knight takes a4, and I, I saw this nasty line, and I thought he was like smacking me right here. Yeah, it is b5. I knew b5 had to work. I knew it had to work. I knew it had to work. So what if I take? It is rook b8. So it's knight c3. I can't hold. I can't hold with knight c3. Knight takes. Takes. Oh, queen a5. And we live. Start a new one, big fella. What are you doing with your life? That's not a move. Yikes. Yeah, I knew I didn't. I knew I couldn't take that pawn. But a lot of times, you just don't. Like, my king's in the center. Like, don't be taking more pawns. I already have one pawn. I've already stolen one pawn. I got this one. I'm about to get out the way and have a nice day, right? So let's go here. I played, uh, he played a4. I went, I went to queen a2. The reason why this weird move, which I played this a lot through, <laughs> throughout this, the match. I actually played a lot of queen a2s, but the reason for this is it actually aims here. I actually just recently beat, shout out to Justin Tan, but Grandmaster from Australia, Justin Tan. If you know who that is, you guys ever heard of him? I just beat him recently though in a simu, actually it was the g6 variation. But this pawn was removed, and a lot of times the knight goes from h4 or g5, I mean for e5, into g6. Because this queen, from the other side of the board, is actually still pinning this. So you're able to take on g6 after provoking a weakness like h6. Bishop g5 happens, they play h6, now that weakens this pawn. But the other one is pinned, so that leaves this vulnerable. Meaning knight e5, knight g6 is a thing. So if you understand, like I tell students this too, right? You got to make sure you understand the themes and ideas of the opening. And themes and ideas wise, that was one of them there that helped me beat Justin Tan, which was sweet. Uh, he was a super grandmaster. I mean, that's super, but he he dumb, he dumb strong. GM, 2600, right? So yeah, you and Levy was delaying castling for mad long. Yeah, because uh, castling is overrated. And that's, that's not a quote that I made up. It's an overrated move. It's actually real. You should record your streams and put them on YouTube. That's what we're doing right now, Darren. Darren Lynn. This one's actually an hour, so we're going to just let it run. No, it doesn't even matter. You know, Hikaru and them. Shout out to Hikaru anyway and Levy and all the big boys out there and all the streamers and stuff. But we, um, we're um, we going to post this one, however long it is. We're just going to post the YouTube. Shout out to you, YouTube. But we are going to post it there. Hi, YouTube. Yeah, we we recording it literally right now. That's why there's no music. What up, James? Great job today. Thanks, Gil Maddox. Appreciate it. Queen A2 was uh the move here this is usual theory stuff this is where the queen should be placed i like this b5 move a lot actually of course i couldn't take this if i take this this was his intention is uh immediately i've jumped off the dp and sent a stretcher to my address okay game over start a new one right you know d don't even do that and if bishop takes this just didn't see like why would i do this I, I saw this line i didn't like bishop a6 now i can't castle my king already still in the center and he castled so I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. So I just said, hey, you know what, bro? I'm up a pawn. I'm up a pawn. I'm going to just come back to civilization and we're about to chill. Bishop e2, he took on d5. And I said, hey, bro, you can have your pawn back. Okay. If I offended you, my bad. Uh, my bad. Thought we was cool. So I got out the way. Castles. He took on c3. I took back. 
knight to d5 and we live hitting c3 very strong move actually i consider queen b2 queen d2 bishop d2 and bishop b2 bishop b2 i didn't like because knight f4 immediately just seems like my knight like this just doesn't seem right i don't like this knights here bishop d2 i actually liked because it not only does it get it off the back rank but it defends and i still keep this diagonal queen b2 looks awkward steps right into an x-ray queen d2 blocks this bishop so and and then i have the c4 move which i actually ended up playing but i played bishop d2 here so now after bishop d2 we have bishop e6 from levy here and i thought for a minute right i thought for a minute here and i'm curious to see what the engine thinks here but i went for an exchange sacrifice and the reason for this is because i felt the bishops and my attack should be enough for massive compensation so here it goes after c4 i knew that i was going to respond with d5 if you play c4 this is super weak now so either you're gonna give it up or like you know these pawns aren't strong like this at all they're very weak actually in fact so with that being said we're going to play e4 right after oh um this is a twitter message shout out to my homie i gotta answer this actually I'm like, yo, we streaming right now, bro. This is actually a big, big time thing. Got to message my guy back. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I play C4 though. After C4, my man's played knight to B6, right? I knew this was coming and here we go, guys. D5 and we live. I hit that man right here, bro. D5 actually. I was excited about this move. Bishop takes a1 is real and actually I wasn't sure if this was right yet I just it just felt right intuition wise here's some lines now if Bishop takes a1 I was actually gonna take on e6 so let's see if that if that's the move it is D takes e6 is good Queen takes a1 is best reason why I didn't like this is because I saw like let's say he moves the Bishop somewhere it doesn't matter where when I go oh for some reason Hess like that movie. Yeah, Hess did. I remember that. Resubscribe. Thanks, Vic Vega. You just resubscribed to over here. You talking about uh, over here to this channel? If you have, refresh the page and it will shout you out, man. And come right to us here. Like Mikey Slice, Slice Master. What's good, Slice Master? Mikey Slice in the building. What's good? Yeah, actually, no, I, 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 I actually missed this. For some reason, I thought that after F6, I, I, there was just stop. It was just stop. That's what I, honestly, this is exactly why I dismissed it. Because I forgot that... <laughs> My bishop can still take the rook. So this would have been good for me still. This would have been good, but I honestly dismissed this idea. I actually wanted to go for this one. I was really hooked on this one right here. And I thought he would move his bishop back somewhere, maybe bishop f6. Then I was going to take here. And then I was going to take on b5. So this is what I was actually going to go for. What up? How did the course go? And had a long day. I was getting in this thing. What's going on, real black queen? We actually lost in the bullet portion, but it was very close. 8 to 13. And in the blitz portion, I actually uh, almost won all of the blitz portion. So, meaning like, uh, you know, up a game here, then even. Then he's up a game. Then we even. Then I'm up a game. It was like back and forth. And it was supposed to be one-sided, quotation marks. But, you know, um, we showed out today. We showed out today. And now it's time to uh, take it to another level here. But congrats to Levy. I mean, his, uh, bro, like, he's a 2,800 bullet. Come on now. And if you know, you've been 3,000 before, like, I would have stopped playing. Like, I, I just, I, why, why do I got to play more bullet chess? If I reach 3,000, zero, 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 I am never playing bullet chess again. Why would I have to? I don't have to. I'm going to just keep it right there. I think in this time for format, DXC is probably a better move. Yes. Vic Vega, thanks for that sub. And a prime from Quinn Tensional. Let's get some lightsabers in the air for Quinn Tensional, the new Jedi with that prime. When COVID blows by, you should come over. Or I can come over there. Oh, yeah, I forgot you in Michigan, bro. Where are you at again, Slice? Yeah, that's yeah, I'm down. That's definitely a, a move, bro. I'll show you where the uh, hangouts are with me and my homies for chess wise. You've exposed your root canty. Is everything all right? Uh, wait, what? No, this not. This is real. No, but this is the line I was actually going to go for. You see how it's equal here? It's crazy because I knew I had some real compensation right here. Show out the end. That's right. Come on, real black queen. What's up, girl? Levy is really, really tough. From what I've seen, he rarely ever blunders. Makes it tough. Yes, man. I was. Hey, look, it was good playing him, man. Yeah, that boy was tough. Learned a lot. Not surprising. I knew the commentary would be one-sided. Well, it was, it was one-sided, but it wasn't like... Like, they gave me a lot of props, you know. And those are my homies, too. I know them. Hess and Amon, like, they're great commentators, phenomenal people, all of me. Like, nothing but love for them, 100%. So, it was great. They actually did 
excellent job, I think, commentary wise, just commentating on everything when, and stuff like that, bro. It was great. They did it. It was great. I, I, I would watch it again, the replay. When the two turns into three, that's enough for me. Wow. <laughs> I'm not even 2000 yet, but I'm on the same page. You ain't Clinton? Oh, you in CT? I know where you at. You work at MGM? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You like right up the street from me. I'm like, uh, I'm in Warren, actually. So, uh, okay, C takes B5. This is the line I was looking at. Now, Levy didn't go for none of this. He said, nope, not today, bro. Not today. So he went bishop g4. And here I, I thought for a while. Reason being is I have kind of like some problems. Now, I remember Amon actually, uh, he or was it Amon or Robert? One of them said, uh, you know, I went, I think it was Robert. I moved my rook. I went, I went rook d1, but... You know, that was that defeats the purpose of me sacrificing the exchange. And that makes total sense here. And if you look at the best move here, actually, by the engine, it actually is C takes B5. So C takes B5 is better. And Rook A to B1 and Rook A to C1. These are all the best moves. Not Rook A to D1. reason why I went here is to put some extra protection on this D-pawn and aspirations of Bishop B3 or Bishop B4 while I got played in the game. How about Bishop B4? Yeah, that's what I played in the game, I, but not right here. I didn't play bishop before. I played rook d1 first because if I, I didn't want to give him both these pawns back here. He did take. I played bishop before, and he was supposed to play c3, which he did. So he played this good. I played h3, and he wasn't supposed to take. But he did here, and I played d6. Apparently, this is not losing, though. I thought he was crushed right here. I literally thought Levy was crushed out of his mind and he was not crushed here according to the engine that is crazy that's crazy calculated chess man thanks for the raid bro good to see you calculated chess in the building and we analyzing my games from today analyzing my games from today okay uh, but here's the move actually queen g5 like that's a hard move to spot and if i take on b6 the idea here is actually playing c2 and about the queen it's kind of weird like he didn't see that either but wow interesting very interesting yeah take take d6 but he didn't play queen g5 he played here and that blundered on the spot well no i took here and then he played uh queen c7 which blundered immediately but it's still equal wow he has a move what this whole line was equal take so this right here is considered still to be an equal possession that's crazy i guess that comp is compensation with this pawn man chess is a beautiful game but he jumped off the deep end right here, and then he just took this rook here, and that's not a move, folks. Game's over. You know, watch a good 10 minutes of the match doing home, right home from work. Thanks. Yeah, bro, it was nice. Naka would have seen it. Yeah. I'm a Jedi. I'm a Jedi. Thanks for the fo follow. Skywalker 1000 Twitch. Takes, and this we just kind of, you know, clockworked it here. Thanks for the follow. Zula, thanks for the follow. Ray, you coming from the um, calculated chess rate, Skyler? Knight d7, rook b1, rook b1 runs into c2. So I tried to trade him off right now. Ray from Ashley. Oh, are they about to raid us? Maurice about to raid us? Did he come through? I don't see no raid. I've seen calculated chess's raid. Oh, he must be about to raid us. Hey, let's go. About to have a big boy raid. Hey, okay, 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 okay. Hey, y'all get hype, man. Y'all get ready to get hype. Get the lightsabers in the air. Like, we just don't care. Let's do it, man. Marie's coming through with the raid. That's going to be nice. The extra piece is pretty nice here. Even better that it's a bishop pair. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a winning one here. This is a winning one here, but it's extremely, you know, difficult in time trouble. But yeah, it should be enough. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> oh man that's a funny name yo thanks for the follow thanks for the follow cst let's go big boy ray from the big fella himself grandmaster ashley yo appreciate you maurice oh my goodness look at the follow chain going crazy yo shout out to maurice ashley what's good bro i hope you had a great stream my guy the legend somebody i look up to in chess appreciate you maurice ashley thanks for the raid big fella 
Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, it's 10 subs in the air. Wave your hands like you just don't care. It's a lot of love today. Appreciate y'all, man. We in here. Let's go. Thanks for the follow. Maurice was off the chain. Maurice always off the chain. Always, man. What did what you think? That's right. That's right. Love your commentary. Respects. Thank you. Thanks for the follows, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Hey, thanks for the raid, Maurice. Have a good one, bro. Get some sleep, man. Great stream. See you on the next one. My bro, good battle earlier. Thanks, bro. Yo, nice tattoos. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the follows, man. We're covering. This is game two right here. This is game two right now. How you been, Canty? Been a while, my friend. Jedi training as usual. You already know. For a big fella like myself. We definitely in here. That's right. Yeah, this is going on the YouTube. Hey, join the Discord too, y'all. Join the Discord. Hang out with us after hours. And here is the YouTube. Night G8, I was there. <laughs> Yo, I'm about to, you know what? I'm going to make a night G8 course just for y'all. But hopefully it's good because I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to have to get some Trumpowski games. And, you know, maybe we'll have some Trumpowski games to see see what that's about. Oh, man, night G8 and we great. Everybody like, yo, I saw that night G8, bro. I saw that night G8. Oh, man, Rugby 1. Rugby 1, yeah. Rugby 1, the problem here, guys, is just push. C2. Listen, it shouldn't be brilliant, Rugby 1. Sir, will you see Pog Chance? Absolutely. Absolutely, I will. Thanks again uh, as a rebuttal. <laughs> Yo, I'm with that. Okay, Walnut. Thanks again, my guy Maurice. Queen D8. Okay, so Queen D8 from Levy here. We this is We're going over the second game. Currently, the score here was 1-0. Hey, uh, Levy won. Uh, Levy won the first game. It was a wild one. So now, um, this is the second game. We're covering the second game here, and let's see what happens. So right here. This is getting towards the end. This was a pan off Botvinnik, and I ended up winning this game. So Ricky three, he played Queen F eight right here. This we was very low on time. He actually dropped a piece. He had like two seconds left. So that, I mean, it dropped a piece. You know, Rook D eight, Queen takes A four, and this was it. This was game number two. Okay, so game number two, I win. Score right now is one to one right now. So cool. That was that was game number two. Let's hop into game number three. Grab this PGM. Okay, grab the PGN. Put that over here real quick. So this one is the next game. What game is this? One, two, this is game number three. Game number three, I played black, so let's flip it. I don't even know what happened. Like, I was just, I was so in the zone. I was so in the zone that I didn't even, like, at one point score, I knew he was going back and forth, but I was like, I don't know what the score is. I just wanted to focus what's right in front of me right so you know i was going in can't got to see Ashley stream to understand rugby one oh okay okay oh nice that's what's up bro so what happened here actually he played a sicilian now look check this out and people don't know this but um levy is known for this sicilian right here and i knew this already i mean i have some very like i don't brag but my my my, my prep is very very good I have some phenomenal prep, you know, so I knew that I was going to probably see this. So what I did, A3 Cecile, yeah. I mean, this is, you know, <laughs> that's funny, Rive, because, like, I'm an anti-Sicilian player as well. So against C5, you know, we have the course here, C3 Cecile for the kill. If you guys want the course, check it out. It's stale $20. It tells you how to cross the Sicilian, how we do it here at the channel. It's also on the YouTube channel, too, as well. i got, like, 26 videos now on how to play this opening, but... E4, C5, C3, right? This is my stuff, but uh, what's his name? Levy played A3, though, and I know he plays this. He has a lot of games in this opening. A lot of games, bro. I hate C3. Let's go, Tall. Carl almost threw up. <laughs> yeah, but but Levy got a course on this, so I understand how Carl... I mean, who Carl, he Carl throws up at everybody's chest, but, you know, his own. Because he's, like, he, he's on another level. He thinks differently. He's at 3,300, 3,400. So anything that's like, bro, he'd be like, bro, how did you miss the maiden 17? Are you serious? Like, come on, Levy. That was maiden 17. Are you serious? You're crazy. You know, and I'll be just laughing because I'm like, yo, like, bro, this is hard, Hikaru. This is hard, man. This is not as easy as you. But we love to see it, though. You did good versus Levy today, Canty. Thank you. Appreciate it. Almost did it. Thanks, man. I was trying. I was trying. Kingy2 anti Cecilia. Okay, you know what? 717. Let me know how that works for you. Let me know how that works for you. If it's great, I would like to check it. And then we'll see. Kingy2, I'm going to probably stay away from that one. But let's see. 
you know, if it works for you, keep it. Keep it, big fella. So A3 was the move. A3 was what he played. Now, what I prepped, what I prepped here, what did I play? I played uh, Knight of Six. I played Knight of Six. Wasn't I just supposed to play Knight of Six? Knight C3. Knight C6. What I was expecting was something else, but he played this weird thing, A3, and I saw a lot of games. Like, when I was prepping for this, I saw... I mean, I looked at a ton of games. I looked at so many games of this uh, with the black pieces, mostly wins and draws. I don't like to ever look at games where black lost because, like, I don't want to get in the tendency of making the lost move that lost them the game. So I like to only look at wins and draws. So I want to see what the style was and what did they go for? What was the plans? What was the ideas? He thinks he means like to. Uh, yeah. Uh, oldie, welcome to the stream. That could be a 92 is a weird one too. With the car was mine, how does he lose? Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Crazy. Knight of six. Oh, thanks. CST Gene. I will actually check that out. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. So Knight of Six happens, right? After Knight of Six, Knight C3. I played Knight C6. He played Bishop B5. Here, I play Knight D4. Because this reminds me of um one of the anti-Sicilians. In that Grand Prix, I think. I think it's the Grand Prix. It's a similar to a Grand Prix. And what happens is, actually, Magnus has some games. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm sort of a Sveshnikov player. I'm more of a hyper, hyper Sveshnikov. Hyper accelerated Sveshnikov. Sounds crazy. But there is some theory out there for it. Thanks for the sub. Gifting a sub. Somebody gifted a sub. Enjoy grips. I didn't come through through the chat. I don't see it there. But gifted sub. Thanks. Appreciate that. A hyper Svesh? What? I know. Hyper. Yeah, bro. It look. Hey. You know, I got some I got some stuff out here, okay? I got a hyper accelerated Sveshnikov. But I do know that um uh, Rive gifted a sub. Yo, why is it not coming through? I don't see him in the chat. Thanks for the sub though, but whoever subbed there, Rive just gifted one. I don't see it though. I don't even see it in the chat. Maybe there's so much going on in the chat. Appreciate y'all. It was a while ago. Oh, that's kind of weird. Thanks for the follow. Thank you, thank you. Yo. I gifted TM, but like, why is he coming through now? That boy tripping. It's all good. So here, uh, Magnus actually had has played this many times before after this knight d4 move. And after knight d4 happens, what he expects is after bishop d3, bishop d3, I think there's a6, and then knight f3 and knight c6. And you actually go back and then play d6, e5, bishop b7, castles. And you play in this manner. Then you play h6, bishop e6, play for d5. That's usually how you would play in this line. Um, and so I was expecting this and, and with the inclusion of an early a3. It's kind of weird That's really what this is about. So I can't keep it up. Yeah, <laughs> I know man. That's kind of funny Kind of funny so many so let's go back though. Let's go. That's what I was expecting or I would be happy to see but that didn't happen So I played knight d4. He played e5 here So I, I took on b5 and now some of the theory that I do remember is when we got here when we got here now actually knight c7 is a move and I was expecting, honestly, for him to play his B4 stuff, but he didn't. He, like, never played it. And some of the lines I looked at was B6, early Finchetto, G6, Bishop G7, kind of a double Finchetto setup, fighting the center, having a great game, to be honest. No no real problems. But he played this differently. He played it differently. Knight takes, takes, Knight D5, A6. you got to get rid of it. Like, that knight's annoying. We kicked him, takes. And the reason why I took that is I said... What did I say? I was like, yo, he gonna have double pawns. I know, I know he's gonna have double pawns. So if we look at this structure in like an overall sense, this is how you wanna, you know, get better at chess. So thanks for the follow, Uncle V Dog. How you wanna get better at chess is like, you know, looking at things overall. And as an overall view here, um like look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's the only difference, right? Only different is this double pawns. Only difference. Right? So, and I got bishops. So, I was like, yo, I should be at least better. You know, I should not lose this game, which I think I did lose this game on time. I think this is the only, like, not only, but I lost this game on time. Thanks for the follow. Wow. What is this name? What? That's, is that the Roy? E4, E5, 9 3, 9 6, Bishop E5, A6. Wow. What a name. Like, spelled out and everything. E4, E5, 9 3. Uh, nice c6 bishop g5 a6 like that's crazy d4 g6 here maybe 
Uh, yeah, I actually played G6. Yeah, I played G6 here. Great job, Vic Vega. I did play G6. And then you play H4. H4 is quite annoying, to be honest. And in all the lines that I've looked at, I've had to play H5. And I had to. Actually, it was Gelfan, Boris. Boris Gelfan had a nasty game. He actually beat, he like smashed Jan Nipomniachi. Jan, Jan played this A3 system in the C Sicilian and got crushed by Boris uh, Gelfan with Bishop G7 allowing H5 and didn't even take. He actually ended up putting his bishop on F6 because I think H6 happened. But that wasn't this game, you know, right? This is, this is going to be different. I heard Levy say the other day, he doesn't allow, he doesn't always play the best move, but shakes it up by going the second. Probably butchered it. Oh, that's different. What's up, Joe? What's good, bro? We in here. Joe Gadsden in the building. Good to see you, bro. So, H4, H5, he played Bishop G5, immediately pinning me. Here I had a few moves, and I realized after playing D5, I saw D5 because I saw how equal I could be, but I didn't like it that much. Didn't like it. I didn't like it. So let me actually see what the best move was from this position. Oh, wow. It was D5. So I played the best move right here. It was. Can't see variation. All right, Joe. You already know. We're going to get that going later. We just analyze these games. So D5, though. Hmm. D5 was correct. That's what I played. I thought Queen B6, too. But this is like a... a it's called, they call this... A, um, what do you call it? They call this a patser threat. Patser threat. Because, like, it's just a small little threat. I'm also blocking this now. Like, I didn't like queen b6. I don't like queen b6 at all. So, wasn't wasn't a fan of it. But d5 is played. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Takes, takes. Bishop f6. Queen, queen b6 blocks b7. Correct. Right. So, now the rook's hanging, right? And I saw this, and I'm like, man, am I okay here? But... Obviously, I'm super equal, right? Like, this is the engine. The engine is good. Knight here. He played here. I'm like, I need to do something. What did I play? I played uh, Bishop E7 first. Takes, takes. And then I played Bishop E6. And then I brought my rooks to the file. Very simple plan, right? Then I'm going to expand on the queen side. Like, it was very, very, you know, easy to do something like that. Just to expand on the on this side of the board. Oh, hold up. Which one is that? All right, let me turn it off right now. Turn it off right now for now, because we, we it's a lot of followers. So um, C4, King F6. After King F6, there was B3. Then I played B5 immediately, because I was trying to break this up. I was trying to break this up. They actually pointed out that after this check, I should have played Bishop F5. Yeah, that's the main move. I should have played Bishop F5. Thanks for the follow, Jack of Trades. Appreciate it. White's got nagging pressure on the E file. Yeah, he does. He does. I should have played Bishop at five here. I actually didn't. I played King G7 and I tried to reroute. He took and I took. And honestly, I thought it, at worst here, I have a draw. At worst, but I am going to push for more. And I kept pushing, right? So I'm pushing. I'm doing well. We got the trade off. Then we start speeding up. And the reason why I'm speeding up is because the time right here was speeding up for both of us here. And then I blundered somewhere around here. I blundered right here. I played check, not and forgetting that he could step forward. So I'm already kind of in trouble here. And I'm like, dang, now I'm messing this up. Thanks for the follow, Rose Dower 47 And thanks for the follow, Unaccountable. Rook A8, A5, and then I went here and check right. So uh, if he would have took mine, I was taking his. That was the plan. He went back. I went back. I'm like, okay, cool. We'll repeat. Oh, bet. Let's get it, right? He went here. And then, here we go. Y'all ready for this? After King here, he went Rook A3. And then I flagged. I flagged right here. Can you believe that? I flagged right here. I flagged. I was so mad. I was like, bro, what? All I got to do is move. But not really because if you move anything like stupidly, you're going to lose. So don't just move. But I was thinking, was it rook takes? Is it just rook takes a7? Yeah, that's one of the lines. And I was thinking uh, this was this was my plan. But I, I mean, I was just I was calculating it before I took it. I wanted to make sure, and I didn't have enough time to make sure. And, I, and this was the idea here, to push here. And if you check me, oops, sorry, of course, that's losing on a spot. Check, I just step, sidestep it. You can't stop the queen with the king. So you're going to have to go back and forth. No matter where I go, we go here, check it up, right? It's just going to be a draw. I'm always going to come in here. You're going to keep checking me, or you're going to let me queen or take it. Either or, it's going to be a draw here. That's it, that's not a move. <laughs> I know, I saw the replay. <laughs> I saw the replay. I said, that's not a rule. And this was game number three here. So Levy's now up a game because of this nonsense here. 
So we're, we were back to even, you know, and then uh, this was game three where Levy won. That was game three, and here's game four. Cool, perfect. So I'm learning from this too. It's always good to learn, guys. Always good to learn. Okay, so can we turn that back on now? I know it was going crazy. We got so many followers. That's great. Like, hey, if you're new to the stream, hit the follow button, guys. This, this is our Discord. Hang out with us after hours. Here's the YouTube channel. All that other good stuff. Welcome to the stream, everybody. So this is game number four. There we go. Thanks for the follow, T Kitchen. Yeah, it's working now. It's working better now. It's like I have some problems with it. Where's the PGN thing? Here we go. Game number four. So first game, Levy won. Second game, I won. Third game, Levy won. Fourth game, it's on me now. Okay, so it's on me now. Okay, it's my turn to win. <laughs> That's exactly how he was playing. Okay, it's my turn to win, bro. Okay, all right, bro. Let me flip the board. Uh, white. All right, there we go. So e4, that was a tough one. Good game, thanks. Yeah. So Karakhan Botvinnik, right? Okay. So we got another Botvinnik. Same thing. We're going down the same row here. Same row. Thanks for the follow, mate into spade. I love this analysis. This has been an incredible stream. As GM Ashley Raider, I'm a new follower, and it's time to subscribe. Let's go. Hit him. Hit him with the sub. Hit him with the sub. Love. Appreciate it. Yeah. We're trying to get on the Naka level subs. Nakamura, shout out to Hikaru, the man, myth, the legend, half man, half everything else, the monster under your bed. Hikaru Nakamura got 13,000 subs. And somebody corrected me today. Said 13.5. Excuse me. 13.5 thousand subs. So we we trying to hit this three this three piece. 300, 400, 500, 5,000. Uh, you are like the Bob Ross of chess. Happy little pawns. Oh, nice. Happy little pawns. And smile and look at the camera. CST Gene with the prime. Because it's time. Ooh, that's that's it. That worked. Because it's time. Okay, we got it this time, y'all. With the prime. Because it's time. We in here, big fella. Thanks so much for the prime. Let's put a lightsaber in the air like we just don't care for this new Jedi. And Z Zaz too. Zaz too. Let's put them sabers in the air for the new one, y'all. Every time we get some new Jedi, people we haven't seen here from the stream or uh, newer subscribers, we, we always put sabers in the chat to welcome you. Thank you so much. For those, enjoy your lightsabers. Use them wisely. This is a family channel. Don't hurt nobody. Uh, Knight of six, Knight C3, and then G6. This is like a, this is game four, but here on game four, I think I made a slight uh, difference. We went down the same line. Queen B3, Bishop G7, takes castles. I went Bishop B2. In the previous game, after he played a5, I went knight f3. This one, I actually just went bishop f3 immediately. Bishop f3 was just better anyway. I think this is following the lines that I've studied of the Penal Botvinnik. Honestly, I learned this. I just started playing this Penal Botvinnik like two months ago, maybe three. But honestly, I have learned this much faster. Sometimes you just gravitate towards openings that like are very, you just know them better. You just, it's easy for you to learn the ideas. Everything just comes to you. I think this is one of the fastest books I've ever read, like the Pan of Bobinick. But it definitely, um, I mean, like I have some very good wins with this. Looking at my win record, it was like, I think it showed like 30 games in this. And I won like 90% of them. It was something crazy, bro. It really was. It was like, yo, I didn't even know that. Like, I, I really thought I was having problems with this. But it actually is one of my strengths is playing against the Carol Khan with this opening. So after Bishop F3, Knight A6, A3. A3 once again, but a, a modified version. In the, first pre, in, the, in the first time we faced this position, I actually played Knight F3. So now B5. And after this B5 move, I didn't like this, actually. I, I knew he was trying for aggressive play. I know he was going for aggressive play. Thanks for the follow, Miss Fluffy. And uh, thanks for the follow, Exo, Exo Shelaton. Nice. Great job today. Thank you, Biga1992. Appreciate it. Knight takes B5 and A4 is on the board. After A4, now I could take this one too. At this point, I'll be up three pawns, but I'm not about to take this pawn. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And I looked for the best move. When you find a good move, look for a better move. I tell my students this all the time. Emmanuel Lasker says that too, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good to know that. When you find a good move, look for a better one. So queen a2 is good. This is what I was used to and what is common. And one of the themes and ideas here in this pan off bottom a g6 variation. Queen a2 is where your queen usually goes. You also have queen e3, but I don't like giving up the pawn, of course, obvious reasons. Queen c2 doesn't really make sense. Why would I put the queen on the open file? Loose pieces lose game. So this knight's undefended. Well, it just doesn't make sense. So queen c4 was actually the best move here. Also stopping and eyeing. Knight to c7, which was a potential move. So I wanted to be able to take that and stay here as well. 
on c4. Very nice centralized queen and defending at the same time. Bishop b7, I expect it because he's hitting his pawn once again. And I hit that man with knight c3 to come back to civilization. And we all good here. Everything defended. If he hits me like he did here, he actually played queen b6. But I thought I was expecting rook c8, which I think came a move afterwards. Knight g to e8, get, I mean e2, get my development going. Knight f4 to put extra protection while castling at the same time. Rook to c8, and then queen a2, boom. We're defending this boy and saying that we're going to keep this pawn you let us take early on. Castles, knight f4, and finish development and be great. You know what I'm saying? If you can maiden one, look for a better one. <laughs> like take it or queen. Funny, that was funny. How long is stream going to be? Honestly, I don't know. Like, we've been streaming how long now? Hour and a, uh, We've been recording for an hour and 25 minutes for the YouTube channel, but we have been streaming for an hour and 50, almost two minutes, two hours. So we may not get through every single game. It might be like a part one and a part two because we already had an hour and a half. <laughs> we're probably going to stop this one like maybe at two hours, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to the next games on the next stream. So queen a2, though. Queen a2, queen b3 is what he played. He played queen b3 here, and this was, I thought this was pretty clever. I thought this was pretty pretty clever from Levy. I was like, ooh, okay. At first, I'm like, just take the queen. Why would he do this? He already down material. The rule is trait when you're up, not when you're down. So after queen takes b3, pawn takes, and now he has this knight before idea. So if I play something like, I mean, maybe, yeah, castles is cool. Like, but let's say we don't castle for whatever reason enzo Frey, thanks for the follow and tuft raven thanks for the follow for whatever reason let's say i don't castle night before is extremely annoying not only you know can't i take this because this pins here but also knight c2 is an idea knight d3 is an idea and i'm hitting e4 i mean look at this knight on the rim went from being nothing to being an all-star in one move you know what i'm saying night before was was gross bro thanks for the tier one two months in advance uncle kev dog appreciate you uncle kev with the tier one man thank you thank you let's go man appreciate that but i didn't i didn't take it right to take is a mistake i tell my students this is all the time no this isn't an a all the time thing to take is a mistake but it definitely is something to be aware of to take is a mistake so if i would have if i if i would have taken on b3 thanks uncle dog uncle kev dog if i would have taken on b3 he did have a night before so anyway we didn't want that so castles i got oh he played queen c2 this is really when he got in trouble this is why he got in trouble right here. So Ham says, love your content on chess.com, man. Thanks, bro. Love your energy, big fella. We in here. Thanks for the kind words. We in here right now. Chop card with the follow. That's a hard name, like hard. Chop card. You know what I'm saying? Chop card. You know, chop card. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Chop card. What's up? What's up? Can I take? Yeah, Fins. That's a uh, JB. Chop Bartholomew. So I went Bishop B3. Oh, I actually wanted to see why. Like, I thought his queen was trapped, but, like, I didn't know how to do it. So, I want to turn the engine on and see what that is. Rookie 1. I'm not playing rookie 1. Bishop g5. Okay, I can see that. And h4. Oh, yeah, h4 is one of the themes. Themes and ideas are always the absolute hardest to remember. But it's very vital that you do. And try to remember as many themes and ideas as possible when you're playing an opening. And, and this such opening in the pan off Bopinic, H4 is an idea. Stopping a potential G5 that happens in the future, which actually happened in this game. So I do like this H4 move for future reference. But Queen C2, Rookie 1, I just don't like this. I, I mean, because my bishop, this is why like, I, I like to teach you know students know about fundamentals. My students all know about we do fundamentals and then we do openings. We do fundamentals first, then we do openings. So fundamentally, I need to get these pieces developed. So I'm just going to go with the fundamental option, bishop e3, and get up out the way and have a nice day, right? So um, appreciate that. Whoa, let's go. Legendary Slayer with the five piece. Nice little five piece to the channel. Five gifted subs. I really appreciate you, man. We had 221 subs because of you guys now or maybe more as it goes through. And almost, you know, getting up to the 300 mark and then trying to get to that man um, to uh, Hikaru level 13.5. And we live. Do you understand? You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Thanks for that. Little legendary Slayer with the five gifted. Come on now. Let's get some love in the chat. Let's get some love in the chat. Appreciate it. Let's go. Let's go. So uh, let me. Um, where's the. Uh, where's the. Uh, Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. All right, Downey. Thanks for the follow, Downey. Agent X Sale. Appreciate it. 
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for the follow, Dirt Fester. <laughs> Can't use the savage. What's up, wizard? Wizard Rod. What's going on, bro? <laughs> Can't use the savage. <laughs> do you ever watch commentary of games to see like what the GMs are saying about your moves, or do you prefer to do it on your own because everyone has their own style? Thanks, Hippo. Excellent question. I actually did exactly that. I, I actually went and watched honestly there was multiple streams so i spent like the next three four five hours after i did the match to watch the commentaries to see what they said to see if i noticed anything different and and see all the supporters like you guys appreciate y'all hold, uh, holding me down there today you know in that match or yesterday now it's, it's midnight over here <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Pocky Penguin. But back to this game, guys. So I went, I, you know, I went for the fundamental option. Develop. Bishop B3. Thanks for the follow, Yipper12345. The coverage of US Qualifier was really clear and engaging. Thank you. How much does Bliss Chess help your classical chess? It depends on how you're playing your Bliss Chess. It, 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 it works if, like, let's say, for instance, you're studying, right? You're studying, and then you go play Blitz, and you play 10 Blitz games, and all of them are very similar to the stuff that you study and you analyze your games right after. That 100% is going to help your game in classical. Now, if you're just playing blitz games back to back to back to back, not analyzing them, and you're just trying to get your rating up, that's not gonna help you in classical chess at all, actually. It's, only, it's not gonna hurt you. I mean, it may help you, it may hurt you if you're moving real fast, but it's definitely going to hurt you if you're not using it intentionally. Uh, saw your video on Tau. Saw your video on Tau Queen Sacks. First time watching the stream. I think about those Tau moves all day long. Yeah, Tau's my grandfather. Yeah, that's my my granddad. I love your YouTube content though. Lost to Levy. Play well. Thanks, man. Thank you. For, yeah, Levy's a, a beast. Absolute beast. One in the bullet there, man. Great job. Congratulations. I hope he goes through. Levy gonna be a force to reckon with the rest of the tournament too. I mean, bullet. I think he might have. He might have the highest bullet rating right now out of everybody. Out of everybody. He might have the highest bullet rating. You do have a bit of a Russian accent. You know what? I thought so. And, you know, lobbying, actually, to be exact, because uh, my, my grandfather's how. So now, bishop b3, and then uh, knight to c7. Knight c7. What did I play after this? I forgot what I played. I think I played knight f4. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I'm just defending. I'm just overprotecting this pawn. I'm up a pawn. I think I'm up two pawns, and I'm overprotecting one of them. He played g5. At this point, he was very, very, very low on time. He faces Eric Rosen or Sagar next. Oh, yeah, that match is coming up. There's a match today, actually. Who plays today? Does anybody know? Anybody know who that is? We could look that up. Oh, can we look that up? No, I don't think we can. It's like they don't have a schedule out for, like, who is playing on what day. The number two and Alicia. Alicia. Hold on, let's go. Let's go to chess.com real quick. Let's go check and see. I really want to see that. I actually do want to see that. Um, where's the article, guys? Where's the article at? I forgot how to get to the articles. <laughs> I forgot how to get to the rest of the articles, bro. What am I doing? Learn today news. I think it's this one. There's a, I'm looking for the bracket. That's all I'm looking for right now. Here it is. Okay. I'm looking for the bracket. Oh, my goodness. The bracket's not even on here. Where? The bracket was just on here. Oh, this was the... Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold up real quick. Oh, my goodness. Hold your horses, big fella. Hold your horses. Where's the Danny one? Oh, it's gone. They took it down, I think. It was Danny and... um. Well, I got I got my own file. I got a bracket right here for y'all. Hold on, I got a bracket. There you go. Let's pull this over into OBS right here. Sweet. And like, drag it down here. Okay, so this is the bracket right here. This is the bracket. I can turn it on and off. So. Yeah, this is the bracket right here. So um, now these are this is an old one because Greg already won. Uh, I lost to Levy, and then you say who about to play? Alicia, 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 where's she at? Oh, Robert, right here. Robert and Alicia over here in the right, or Rosen and Sangar. Sangar. This is gonna be nice to see. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. How long did it take you to get really? 
fast where the algebraic notation is second nature did you do anything to memorize it faster honestly bro i just kept playing uh, i don't even remember like practicing that at all i never i don't think i've ever practiced just like okay where's e4 okay where's d5 i just played and studied chess and it just came naturally to be honest that's the best answer i could give you because that's just how it happened for me let me go you know you're you are going to suck at that first like it's just like anything new you're going to suck at you're going to suck at it but yeah, at, over time, bro, I mean, like, 20 years of playing chess, actually 21 now, of playing chess is, uh, we'll have that toll on you, you know, in a good way. We have to root for Carissa. Yeah, Carissa's a beast, bro. Carissa's a beast. We'll see what she does, but good luck to everybody playing, you know. I'm just hyped. You know, I was, uh, I didn't, Levy didn't come in here and, like, you know what I'm saying, just embarrass me, right? You know, we came through and, like, I held our own here, and he caught us in a bullet. That was it, caught us in a bullet. So, all right, uh, queen f5, let's turn this off, turn the engine off right here. After queen f5, um, I actually thought I was losing the piece. I was like, bro, what am I doing? What am I doing? But I played knight f to e2, and after g4, I did find knight g3. Now, here's a move I missed, right? Let's go through this. I was getting low on time. Not only did Robert Hess point this out, he Karu pointed this out as well in the chat. I mean, I, I remember when he did this, or when they showed this, and I'm like, oh, cool. And here I go, you know, now I, I'm not even gonna lie, like he had like one second here and I was trying to look around the board to see how can I do something with him having one second as well. Now, this was very risky to do. F3 was not a good move. I mean, not that it's terrible, I'm not losing, but I do give everything back, right? I give everything back, especially after H4, I take and then takes, and then we have this kind of position. So yeah, this is fighting, like white's still fine, but black's definitely fine now, it's equal. When I was just winning, right? So. But I played F3, but he didn't have enough time, so he actually flagged right here. He flagged right here. Just like in that game that was supposed to be a draw that I flagged. I think that was game two. One or two, I don't remember. But the game I was uh, supposed to win and flagged. It happens. It happens. It happens. But I was supposed to play queen B1 here. I actually missed this. I actually just missed the easy move. Time froze. All the GMs. Yeah, they did. They lost their mind, bro. All the GMs was like, what? F3? Oh, my goodness. And then it was like, oh, he flagged. And it was just like nonsense everywhere. Nonsense everywhere. So this was the – now he flagged here, and, and I did learn from this game too as well. So, so far, four games. I think we we're even here. Yeah, because we, we finished out even until the very last game of the 3-1 where he, we, he was up one game going into the bullet. I remember that. You had the Tower of Giza. Yeah, I did. I did. Thanks for the follow us, John. Appreciate you, man. Are these bullet games you're analyzing? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. No, these are um, these are the five one. I'm only I'm not gonna analyze the bullet. I mean, I'll look at a few of the bullet games. I'll look at a few of them, especially the Knight G8 one. Knight G8 and we great, right? But um, I'm not about to analyze many bullet. Some stuff like bullets just different. Like you don't need to really analyze bullet games, honestly at all. But if it's high level bullet, meaning like it was very theoretical and it got you can get to move 30 in a bullet game. I mean, imagine that, right? You still theoretical in in theory in a bullet game on move 30. Oh, yeah, that's a real thing. That's real. Right. So with that being said, though, we, we analyze in the five ones and the three ones. So let's go. Uh, let's go to this one. This is all tied up right here. All tied up. And then we went into this game. What time we have with the two hour mark? All right. We're going to look at this last one. Which, and then we're going to cut it and then. We're going to upload this to YouTube, and uh, and then uh, we'll we'll do another stream for the rest of the games. Got you. I hear you. Thanks, bro. Where can people who miss the streams today view them? You can see it on YouTube. YouTube is you can go to chess.com's YouTube, chesscom YouTube. If you're a subscriber to Hikaru Stream, you can see it on Hikaru Stream. YouTube it. You can even Google it. You know it'll come up. Thanks for the follow. Uh, Nyland Landoy Nylandoy. 11. So this game was the crazy draw. Look at this position, right? Oh, this draw hurt me. This draw hurt. This draw right here. Reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to slam my table, my wooden table in front of me and break something because of how I felt about this draw right here. Okay. Just want to let y'all know that this is a stalemate that hurt me. Oh my goodness. It hurt as much as a loss would, but you have to bounce back. And if you have something like this, what do you do? Forget about it and move to the next game. Because if you let it linger, it will affect your thinking, which will affect your results. So make sure you know. Okay, now let's get this PG in. Talk about what happened. Yeah, let's grab this PG in real quick.
Okay, here we go. All right, we have Black here, right? So he hit us with the Trumpowski, you know. I prepped really hard on this. Now I have to find something more. I have to find something aggressive that's not 94 anymore. Because I noticed, and before everyone else that got here, if you are new to the stream, welcome. Hit the follow button. Go to the YouTube. Subscribe if you can. All that support. We really appreciate y'all, man. Definitely. But, um, like, I need to find something that isn't, like, I had many, many games. Thanks for the follow. I had many, many games here in this Trumpowski where I was fighting. I was defend. I had tactics, but it was the defense tactics. Like, defense tactics are cool, but the tactics you really want are attacking tactics. There's two separate kinds. That means you're on the attacking side of the tactics or you're on the defensive side of the tactics which means you still might have some but it's very very defend like defense like cramped like not fun like and that's what i got in these positions all game all the entire time counter attacks thank you yipper yes counter attacks this wasn't fun it was not fun so i have to find something new now and as you see the engine here actually recommends d5 so i might you know i'm gonna be looking at some stuff i actually played <laughs> the night ga <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because you know everybody thought this was a mouse slip and this is not a mouse slip bro i did this on purpose now of course the engine going crazy but like you have to think about this guys like you know i always tell students right plus or minus two up plus or minus up to two is about equal when you play in humans is it going to always be equal because they're going they are not going to make all these moves here from the engine correctly they just don't do that you know it's just not going to happen so this this evaluation is going to change Thanks for the follow, Shore Myra. Thanks for the follow. Night G8, bro, I'm going to fall out my chair. Bro, I play this, and what's funny is, if anyone's familiar with the Black Lion or any type of, like, H6, G5 systems in the King's Indian, I'm an aggressive player. So immediately, even in the, in, the, in that Night G8 game, I played this real fast. H6 and G5, I'm a fan of it. I love playing that kind of chess. But you, you have to be accurate, too, and it's more it's easier to, when, you're, when, you're ha when you have more time on the clock. Then when you don't, you playing bullet chess, which I did. This was a mistake playing bullet chess. And I think, did I win that game too? I don't remember which one I won, but I was, it was H, it was like, uh, man, it was, it was tough, but H6 G5 was, uh, was my intention here. Night G8. And they thought I made a mouse slip, but I did not. I was definitely playing Night G8. Was legit. Wait, wait, watching this match on YouTube and decided to check if you were streaming. Oh yeah. What's up? Me, I'm, I'm streaming right now. This is going to be the last game we're going to cover today. Um, and then we'll, we'll cover some more games tomorrow. We'll cover the rest tomorrow, maybe like two hours worth of games. This is also going to be posted on our YouTube. If you're new to the stream, again, hit the follow button. But check these links in the chat. That's the club right there for our club tournaments in the chat right there. This is the Discord. Hang out with us after hours. All that chess content fun. This is the YouTube channel. Let's go. Didn't that match stalemate? This one, uh, this, no, not the match didn't. I wish it would. It would be nice. But um it was a stalemate basically all the way up into the end until we went to the bullet he, he we went into the bullet match he was up one game and i think we played it was like seven and a half six and a half so we played f 14 games and he was only up one game and then we went into the bullet and then he won in the bullet so he pulled away uh eight eight to eight to 13 i think yeah that's what it was yeah he went off in the bullet but bullet is another animal that man was three three thousand right i felt the strength Nice. Love your analysis. I'll catch you for sure. Thanks, Fred. Appreciate it. And then Bullet. Yeah, Bullet is tough, man. Bullet. But I mean, of course, like, you know, I made a statement that uh, it's true, man. I don't focus on Bullet. I don't play. Like, I'm, I got to 2600 and I was like, cool. I'm good. Like, let's focus more on everything else and get these norms and then we'll come back and do whatever Bullet, right? But, I mean, you have to notice, too, there's a lot of GMs that don't even, not even 2500 Bullet. You can go check right now. You can go check right now. There are not a lot of GMs that are 2,500 bullet, right? You know, one of my chess coaches, a strong 2,600 GM. And I was like, yo, his ratings suck online. I mean, like, they don't, they were still like 2,400. But I was like, yo, he don't even play on online. He don't even care. He like super strong. Focus on real chess. Yeah, I understand. Dale Fire. I mean, it's fun. It's very fun to play, though. Like, it's extremely fun to play and very addicting. But at the same time, like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm focused now. And there's super GMs like Kirwana. Yeah, Kirwana. I mean, he did. I played Kirwana on ICC one time. Back in the day, didn't know it was him until, like, you know, you could do the, uh, you could look him up. What was it? FI? FI on um, ICC. And I forgot his username, but it was like Fabiano Kirwana. I was like, oh, snap. I just played Fabiano. I lost in an in game down a pawn. I was hyped. Like, bro, I just beat. Oh, like, yo, that was. Oh, snap. And it wasn't Fabi, like, Fabi now, Fabi. It was Fabi, like, oh, he, like, 
strong. Everybody still know him, but he wasn't like super GM yet. <laughs> Excuse me. Do most high dollar tournaments require you to do well in bullet? Uh, yes and no. Some don't even have bullet. It just depends. It just depends. But you know, bullet is a part of it sometimes, and that kind of sucks. That's why you, if you want a big lead, you need to run away quickly with a big lead in the blitz. That's what I was really trying to do, but it never got that chance. It's very hard. Very hard. Thanks for the follow, Jed. Appreciate it. I played an FM loss, but still got pretty hype. You should be, man. You should be. Absolutely playing hype. It's just like, I mean, I could lose a thousand games to call you straight, and I'll be hype every single one. Every single one. I'm telling you, I'm going to learn something, and guess what's going to happen, too? It's why you play players better than you. I'm going to go play other players, and I'm going to be crushing them because I just played a thousand games with Hikaru. Yeah, I lost every single one, but now how many am I going to be you in a row now? So you want to make sure that you play and learn from your games. Kiriwana seems to be the best at evaluating that position. Yeah, yeah, he's a calculating machine. That's why his he gets in time trouble because he calculates so much that he actually gets in time trouble. H4, is C5, very nice stuff, right? But I'm going to stop playing this, man. I mean, Levy, not that he deterred me from playing this, but he deterred me from playing this. Because I got, I like, again, I got aggressive in the beginning, and then it slowly became a defensive, passive position. And then we would keep going into this line. I would be slightly aggressive in the opening, and then it slowly became passive again. So I'm like, okay, I need to find something better because this looks aggressive, but looks are very deceiving. Because after D5, Queen B6, turn this engine off. Knight D2, same line, and I prepped for Levy. I had this H6 version. If he takes, it's a very fun line with pawn, uh, pawn takes. If Knight takes, Queen takes B2, Rook to C1, G6, followed by Bishop G7 with the Bishop on C3 coming. D6, Knight D7, Knight B6 is or A6, B5, or even Knight E5. So I had a lot to play for, you know, a lot to play for. I was already ready, but he never allowed me to play this. Bishop F4 was the one I studied the least because people weren't playing this as much. And what did Levy do? Play Bishop F4. Cool. All right. Now we out here. Now we out here for real. Snap, snap. Of course, this is hanging, but this is the intention here. I got my pawn back, right? And then you pop this in the engine real quick. Bam. Pop this in the engine. It's equal. They prefer black by half a pawn, which is basically equal. This is equal. It was a fun match. Very exciting. Until the bullet. Uh, you did great. Thanks, Desert Lightning. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. So uh, I was supposed to. I played E6. I actually lost that game really badly when I played the E6 line that the engine recommended because. Uh, you know, when we went on break, I went to go check. I'm like, hold on, let me check this line real quick, which is, uh, you know, they were saying that's what you should be doing. And that's what I do anyway. Like, you know, you should always be checking. Like, you're in a match. So if you get a break, go take a break and go look at the line. Take five seconds and look and see if there's something better. So I went for this E6 line later on, and it didn't work. It, like, this was an ugly line. Like, that E5, I was for life. I think I, I won, like, two games, maybe three games with this E5 move. But E6 was... As soon as I played this one, I was I lost. Bishop four is not studied. That's why he played it. I figure I played Trump easier to play with white and blitz especially. Old me, yeah, I know, I know. What's up, old me? Big fella in the building, trip trip master over here. What's good, big fella? So I played e five in this one though. He played bishop g three and then I played d six and I play this kind of setup. A lot of times you can go for g six bishop g seven. A lot of times you can, but with this early h four that I, I like, uh, it shows that Levy has played this opening a lot because this h4 move is quite annoying for the player in the trumpowski that wants to play the g5 and bishop g7 thing but you can't play that because h4 is here so you might have to settle for g6 which now this looks kind of weird with g6 and h6 here but also if h6 was not here and you only have g6 you have h5 and potential ways of breaking open the king side following with bishop d3 maybe sacking or somehow getting the queen over here and you're getting made it, so you may have to counsel queen side, but that's already an open B file. Probably your best bet, though, to be honest. It's easy to defend this B file with moves like B6. Very simple. Very, very simple. He played it his whole life. Hey, I figure. I figure, because, I mean, he played some, some great chess there, man. I mean, I play E4 all my life, so that's why I play E4, right? That's my uh, my thing I played all my life. Knight D7, C4, and I played Knight B6. I remember MVL, actually, believe it or not. MVL has a... Uh, he has played this position. I remember checking the database, uh, not recently, but a while ago. I mean, it had to be a year, maybe two years ago, but a long while ago where actually uh, MVL put the knight on b6 in these lines and played bishop to d7. Now, there is some things different, but that, that's the way that he would usually play knight b6, bishop d7. Rook c1, I played bishop b7 just to develop. Never was afraid of my queen being trapped because all lines either lead to queen g4 or like queen g6 and f5. So I was good for my queen being trapped. 
So what does he do? He plays a4, actually, to play a5. This was an unexpected move. I did not expect a4. And honestly, what I was what I was about to do is push mine, but I didn't expect a4. Uh, let's go, Quinn. Thanks for gifting the sub to Omid. Did you play d5 to avoid the trump? Ah, uh, nope. Uh, I'm knight of six for life. Okay, well, not for life, but I mean kid for life. We'll say that, but definitely did not play no d5, bro. I was I wanted to play into his trump because I prepped, but this was a very hard prep here, man. This was very hard. Glad I followed your streams. Good luck in future endeavors. Thank you, Yipper. Fresh Prime was good. So after A4, I hit him with the castle. He hit me with A5. I had to back that boy up. And you see what I'm saying? Like, my position is so cramped. But I think I'm up a pawn, right? 3, 6, 7. 3, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, I'm up a full pawn. But my position is so cramped. So, like, I need another way to play the Trumpowski. Because this is not acceptable anymore. After H5. Now, did you guys remember watching this move here? When I played Queen H7 here. I was thinking for a while when it before I made this move, Queen H7. I was thinking for a while, and the reason, not for a while, but I was thinking, like, I don't have many moves, period, for the queen. Like, I can't, and if I retreat, then all these pieces look ugly anyway. So I needed to untangle, which means my queen's in the way, I need to defend it, and I want to untangle all at the same time. I would love to play f5, but I'm scared my queen's going to be trapped in some cases. So what did I do? I know it's awkward, and I know it's crazy. It's either going to work or it's not, so I play queen h7. Queen h7. Thanks for the follow. Ticks, ticks, t. Appreciate it. I mean, literally, I my queen's on h7 looking absolutely crazy out here. Bishop h4. Snap, snap. And then I hit him with f5. And I did this on purpose, knowing knight g6 was a thing. Knowing this was a thing. Because I had knight f8 in mind, which I ended up doing. Bishop b2. Rook f7. King's Indian fashion. I in this. Also knight f8. If knight g6. Rook g1. Knight f8 anyway. f4, which is aggressive. I snapped. He snapped, and then here it goes. And the reason why I captured and not play g5 first, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, open king here, you want to make sure that we keep the king in the center of the board. So how do we do that? Open it up. Open up the center. Then I hit him with g5. Boy, I was so hyped to make this move. Shout out to Robert Hess. Uh, Robert <laughs> Robert liked this move too. Robert was like, g5, Kitty, g5. And I'm like, we live, right? So g5 is a very strong move. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I was very happy to play this move because I knew I had counterplay now. Rookie seven's coming. I can put the queen on the dark squares now. I really don't want to take this, but I'm glad that he, he actually, oh, no, he backed up. No, he played knight three. I thought he captured, but I, thought, I was expecting him to capture is what I meant. I was expecting him to capture. We were going to go through this line here. And then if bishop h5, I have, I mean, there's two separate checks. So, you know, I had this, uh, I had that unlocked there. But g5, he went knight f3, I went queen here. And I'm just trying to get on the dark squares, but also relieve my knight from the f8 duties. Knight h7 happened, now we're defending. And this got really cool here. I mean, I got all the counterplay I needed. I'm thinking like, you know, basically I was winning this game. I'm like, let's go. Like, I'm coming back here, I'm about to win this. Uh, and it looks like I'm giving up a pawn, but I had this in-between move. Knight e4, very strong. Snaps. And then queen h7, so that was wrong. But what was the right move here? I mean, it's like crushing, crushing. G4, huh? G5 is crazy to see. Oh, man. But I'm always into that kind of chess. I'm always looking for creative resources and ideas. That's why Tao is my favorite player, you know? So you study players that you really like. You know, it, it's not a coincidence that the styles and things that they like to do rub off on you. Thanks for the follow, red charger, blue charger. That is a funny name. Okay, queen h7, king g1, queen h6. I just did that to stop h5. I also play g4 in some cases. Queen 3, rook e8, take, take, check. And here we go, right? Here we go. Okay, so this guy, I know I'm winning here. Let's turn the engine off. I know I'm winning here. All right, I'm going to take this pawn. Okay, I'm pushing. Things got good. But the thing to realize is I was in time trouble again. I was in time trouble. I was definitely in time trouble. And I know he was too. And he went for this line, and I'm like, oh, cool, this is a win, right? So we start mar marching pawns, stuff gets real. Okay, cool, yeah, yeah, let's see this, let's see this, let's do our thing. I'm like, man, I'm working this, man. There's no way I'm losing this. He plays king a1 and hits me with a, ooh, that's nasty, right? Because if rook takes stalemate, got him. Gotcha, big fella. So I played a3. Hopefully he takes, and he didn't. So he plays rook b1. I went rook b2. I mean, there was another stalemate trick here, too, that I messed up. Rook here, he went around. I push the pawn, right? I get it to c3. I'm trying to get in here. 
And then he goes back. He's trying to check me. There was a draw here. There it is. It's right here. And what he was supposed to do, you see a zero? Take it right now. Take it right now. Oh, my goodness. And I didn't see it. He didn't see it either. He played Rick F6, and now Black's winning. Now, what was I supposed to do? Rick B1, King A2, Rick B2, King A1, B6. I mean, this was crazy. This is crazy, yeah. Oh, this is... <laughs> Man, I'm glad I didn't lose this, though. But there was nothing I could do from here. Sucks. That's what it looks like. <laughs> like, that, when does this happen, right? That's so funny to be able to do that. Rick B1. Yeah, Rick, Rick B1 was a move, though. Rick B1, let's say King A2. How about just, like, go nowhere? King D1. Check. King E2. Check. Oh, uh, yeah, I should do it. Hmm. I should do it there. Yikes. But what happened actually in, in here? Rook F6, King E7, check. Yeah, yeah. And I just took and he still, it was still me. So, I mean, yeah, it was still me. He couldn't get out the corner here. So, I think this is where we took a break. How many games did we play? One, two, three, four. So, I think we took a short break right here. But at this point, it was two and a half to two and a half and i'm feeling great i'm like bro i played two i'm like yo i'm hanging with levy like two and a half two and a half let's go bro thanks for this when did you start playing seriously ever take a long break i took like a year break um like in 2012 maybe 2013 and i was just doing other stuff and now i'm back man i'm like man, i'm never taking a break again I'm like chess is life life is chess so Love it. I ain't going nowhere. Chess is life for me. So frost on frost on herb. I see you. I see you in the chat. So yeah, this was the game. This was a uh, game five. We had two and a half, two and a half guys. It was even. That's what's up. Thanks, Tough Raven. Yeah, it was completely even now. So I mean, with that being said, it was pretty cool though. And going into the next rounds, we're going to analyze the rest of the games on um, the next stream uh, from there.